Wyoming is known for its pioneer spirit and resilient cowboys. For a man to survive in the Wild West, he needed courage, strength, and heart. Those same attributes will be required tonight when Wyoming sanctions the first legal night of bare knuckle boxing in the United States since 1889. From the Cheyenne Event Center, this is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. Hey, fight fans, I'm Ron Kruk. Welcome to the beginning and the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Tonight, one of the oldest sports will become one of the newest as we begin a new era in combat sports. Tonight, the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship will make history by staging the first legally sanctioned Bare Knuckle event in the United States in 129 years. Athletes from a wide variety of disciplines, including boxing, mixed martial arts, kickboxing, Muay Thai, will all be competing in a four-roped circular ring called the Squared Circle. All fighters are out to prove that they are the best pure strikers on the planet. What should fight fans expect tonight? Well, no one really knows. This is truly the beginning and completely unscripted drama. One thing we do know is that the men who will have the best seats in the house are our commentators, Sean Wheelock and world champion Antonio Tarver. They have tonight's call. Gentlemen, good evening to you. Thank you very much, Ron. Combat sports history will truly be made tonight here inside the trademark squared circle. He is the great Antonio Tarver, five-time boxing world champion. Antonio, this is going to be something special here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And in the main event, we have Rico Rodriguez, who's come in with all, everything to lose. He's the man with the reputation. He has a bullseye on his back, and he can't take that lightly. He's a marked man because everybody's gunning for him in this tournament. Rico Rodriguez, of course, the former UFC heavyweight champion. You will see him in our main event. Quarterfinal number four, the final quarterfinal of this eight-man heavyweight tournament. Antonio, he will face 28-fight pro MMA veteran, Bellator veteran, Lewis Rumsey. And Lewis Rumsey, very rugged guy, tough guy. He has a great deal of respect for Rico, but he said tonight is his night. And how can, it would be no other way to start this event with a huge upset if he can pull it off tonight. Women's 125-pounders in our co-main event. We will see the Australian, truly one of the most outspoken fighters in all of combat sports. She's a UFC an Invicta veteran. She is Beck Rawlings. I love Beck Rawlings. I like the way she approaches it. And, you know, she's a big star. If you see her on, if you follow her page on social media, she has a huge following. And again, she's the one with the, with the bullseye on her back because she's favored to win this tonight. Her opponent, the professional boxer, Alma Garcia, she's simply not intimidated. And she's not, and I like the way she comes and approaches it as well. And she has seven pro fight experience. And all of uh, Rollins' uh, things has done is ground and pound is obsolete tonight. She's going to have to do it standing up with her fist, and we'll see how close that fight is tonight. Champ, we are ready to go. Ron, this truly begins a new era in combat sports. Absolutely, it does, Sean, and I am thrilled now to be joined by the founder and president of the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships, David Feldman. David, welcome. Hey, Ron. How you doing tonight, man? This is going to be epic. Oh, yes, it is, my friend. I know you have been on a mission to resurrect the lost sport of bare knuckle boxing, and now tonight you see it come to fruition after a lot of hard work. How satisfying is it that the Wyoming State Athletic Commission has sanctioned this event this evening? Well, Ron, I'm probably going to use the most overused word in sports, just unbelievable. This is truly unbelievable. That's something we've been working on now for only 3,266 days to get this thing done. And now we're finally here. I can't believe it, but we're here and we're going to have an unbelievable night of action. Only a decade, huh? Who would have thought? Hey, for combat sports fans, David, who are checking this out for the first time tonight, what is going to sell them and make them fall in love with this sport? Well, I think everybody wants to know what it's going to what the best strikers have. I mean, these are truly the guys that they have to, they're taking their gloves off. It's bare knuckle. Bare knuckles hitting the skin. It's really something that no one's ever seen before. So I think what they're going to see is a ton of excitement tonight. I think they're going to be on the edge of their seat the entire night because we've never seen this before. And I think the fighters are really going to give their all tonight, Ron. Well, you've assembled an all-star cast, that's for sure. The other thing, David, is this is not a one and done by any means. Give us a little idea about the future of your organization. 
Well, Ron, as you know, tonight we started the quarterfinal round in the heavyweight division. The semifinal round will take place in September and then the finals in December. But in September, we'll start another weight division for the uh, quarterfinal round. And we're going to build every one of our champions because we're planning on sticking around for a long time, Ron. I'm thrilled to hear that. Now, final question I have for you. You know, boxing has its fans. Mixed martial arts has exploded. What makes bare knuckle fighting different from those other combat sports? I think it's just something like the forbidden fruit, like something that they couldn't have before now they can have it it's something that they've seen they've seen on youtube they've seen on different types of the internet platforms but now it's here it's legally sanctioned the first time ever really in history that a government body has legally sanctioned a bare knuckle fight and i think they're going to give the fans everything that they have and i can almost almost do a money back guarantee that you're going to be sitting on the edge of your seat all night long i can't wait my friend david enjoy the evening thank you ron all right time now to Time now to check out the rest of some of the featured fights on tonight's card. In the main event in one of our eight-man heavyweight bouts, former UFC heavyweight champion and a veteran with 54 career victories, Rico Rodriguez will throw down with another mixed martial artist, Pennsylvania's Lewis Rumsey. In the first ever women's bare knuckle bout, Former UFC flyweight Beck Rawlings takes on Denver boxer Alma Garcia. And you can't have a bare knuckle boxing event without the man who says he was born and bred for this sport. 71 and 0 heavyweight champion Bobby Gunn. He faces Brazil's Ideo Beato Costa Jr. And we will kick off this monumental night in Wyoming with the first heavyweight tournament matchup as Chicago's. Arnold Adams throws down with California's DJ Linderman. We are ready for the first bare knuckle boxing event since 1889. It's time to toe the line for the call. Here's Sean Wheelock and Antonio Tarver. Thank you, Ron. Time now to open this stacked and historic card. Heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number one, Arnold AJ Adams versus DJ Linderman. Antonio, we see our tail of the tape. Yeah, pretty much even fight. You got two inches uh, for Arnold. For Adams right here, that's about it. And the ages right there, right with each other. But look at the 78 reach. If he can stay outside and use that reach, it could be to his advantage tonight. Tonight's fight for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship are under the auspices and control of the Wyoming Mixed Martial Arts and Combative Sports Commission. All fights scheduled for five two-minute rounds this evening. Three judges scoring on a 10-point must system. No three-dot-down rule, no standing eight. Hand wraps must be at least one inch below the knuckles. Punching champ in the clinch is allowed. And that's going to be very important because a lot of times when you're boxing, as soon as you clinch, they break it up. But not tonight. They can fight. Time now to make history. We go to our outstanding ring announcer in the squared circle. Here is Jeff Houston. Good evening and hello, Cheyenne. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Cheyenne Ice and Event Center. Welcome to history in the making, as each and every one of you are the envy of the fighting world here tonight. And welcome to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. We are live worldwide. And ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to get this party started. So first, we would like to go ahead and introduce our judges who will be officiating tonight's event. Josh Johnson. Janelle Melesh, Kevin Champion, and Tom Gilogli, and our referees assigned to our chaos inside the squared circle, Dan Bergliata and Bill Clancy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live worldwide on pay-per-view, if you are ready, it's time to knuckle! We are set for our first fight of the night and it is scheduled for five two minute rounds and it is a heavyweight tournament quarterfinal fight number one. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he is wearing pink and red, trimmed in black. His official weight, 261.6 pounds. He stands six feet, one inch tall. 
His MMA record consists of 21 victories opposite 14 defeats with six big wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Wairika, California. Here is DJ the Protege Linderman. And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he is wearing black, trimmed in gold. He stands six feet three inches tall, his official weight 255.6 pounds. He is an MMA veteran of 17 professional fights. Fighting out of the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, please welcome AJ Bomaye Adams. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Okay, corners out. The first fully recognized bare knuckle fight in the United States since 1889, and the first legal sanctioned and regulated right, bare knuckle line. fight ever. Up the scratch for Adams and Linderman as they tow the line and knuckle up. The bell in round number one. Black trunks for Arnold A.J. Adams. Pink and red trunks for D.J. Linderman. <laughs> right hand from Adams. See the lateral movement, stiff jab from Adams. Linderman trying to find his way to the inside. Didn't think they would come out as technical as, as both guys has. There's the dirty boxing, big uppercut in the clinch. Martini's jab, smile on the face of DJ Linderman. Good left hand from Linderman. And a smile from Adams right back. Wide open guard champ for Adams. Yeah, he's relaxing there. He's moving, but he's, ooh, just threw a beautiful right hand. He's gonna have to get that front, that front hand moving though. There you go. You wanna stick that jab just to keep him at bay. One minute remaining round number oh. one. And that is ruled a knockdown by Dan Mergliotta. And that was a short jab. You don't, it don't take much if you land solid with no gloves on. Hands up. You ready to go? Okay, ready. We fight on. Linderman ready to go. We'll see if Adams pounces. These two minute rounds will absolutely fly by. No, Adams looked like a control fighter. He's using his technique right now. Like I said, that jab is very important. Adam said, I have unusual and even exceptional speed for a heavyweight in combat sports. Linderman again to the inside. Linderman said of Adams, he's not explosive. If this goes past two rounds, he will absolutely gas out. Abrasion under the left eye of Linderman. Good stiff jab from Adams. Final seconds, round number one. Looked like a little cut on Linderman's uh, left eye. He's blinking and rubbing it. Morning for Mergliata. That mouse has popped in the end of round number one. We are so pleased that you're with us watching live in the U.S., Canada, and around the world. History being made, BKFC, the beginning. Right here, you see, it's just a quick, and he just turned that left hand over, that lead hand. Caught him right on the button, right below the nose, right there. Very competitive first round. That, of course, is the voice of the great Antonio Tarver. Mason in the line, Dixon for Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Five time two division boxing world champion. Okay, Truck is with us. Jeff Houston is our ring announcer. I'm Sean Wheelock. That is a nasty mouse that has popped in round number one under the eye of Bellator right, veteran DJ Linderman. 21 pro career MMA wins for Linderman. He's also fought five times as a professional boxer, steps in with that left. And that's what he needs to do, keep that pressure on him, because when he, he got some good work inside like he's get, he's doing now. That looked like a little elbow then. Smart with the head movement, you see the pivot, not a butt, but legal, and there's the fighting from the clinch. As long as they don't clinch with both hands, it's all legal. Linderman backing out, the separation, the restart from Dan Mergliotta. Truly one of the best referees in all of combat sports. Linderman got to get some head movement because that front hand is eating him alive right now. There. 
Could have been also cut now between his eyes. So two different cuts Ooh. as he eats that uppercut with the right hand from Adams on his face. Nearly an elbow from Linderman. That is not allowed. Punches only. Right. Three, to the five, body. Five. Taking him over. Look at the doctor right now. Time called, round number two. And tonight's fight under the auspices and control of the Wyoming Mixed Martial Arts and Combative Sports Commission, putting a premium on safety. Two cage side physicians in attendance. Two outstanding cut men. See Bill Smith stitched around the other cut man on this show. Amusement on the face of Arnold A.J. Adams. Well, that's something you probably won't see in boxing, where you got the cut man <laughs> doing some cut work while he's watching, while he's uh, going to be reviewed by the doctor. This is a good chance for him to get a second win and might keep himself in this fight just a little bit longer. Time in, round number two resumes. Immediately, Linderman on the resumption turns up the volume. That's where he's done most of his good work inside. Hard left hands from Linderman. There's the separation from Adams. Adams said of Linderman, his only asset as a fighter is experience. AJ Adams supremely confident entering this bout. It looks like he's the most experienced guy because nice right hand. It looks like his, his poise right now sticks out. Even though he's in a bare knuckle fight, he seemed to be poised beyond his experience. He left hook from Linderman, misses badly. Linderman in MMA, known for a very good left hook. Final seconds, round number two. Arnold Adams feeling very good about things here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. He can't see out of again. I don't think he can see out of that left eye. It's closing rapidly. Jay Linderman, as you see, standing in his red corner. Again, the mouse that popped under the left eye, and then in round number two, the cut between the eyes. It's really a slice between the eyebrows, bridge of the nose. Oh, nice uppercut. Good head move by Adams also. I mean, you would think a guy would be... The fight has been stopped, and that is it. Whoa. <laughs> so Arnold A.J. Adams, at 32 years old, the veteran of 17 career pro MMA fights, now claims victory in the first legal sanctioned and regulated bare knuckle fight ever. Smile on the face of Adams. Arnold Adams said, DJ Linderman will be stepping into the dark and I have night vision goggles. <laughs> he was supremely confident. And that was an outstanding performance in victory. There's the show of respect between these two fighters. Sale from DJ Linderman, and again, you see those two nasty cuts. Champ, I think it was just the length of Arnold A.J. Adams throughout that fight. With that too, and again, like I said, he was poised, he was under control, he knew exactly what he wanted to do, and he got it done tonight, he moves on. And I'm telling you, I think he moves up in the ring for his favor to win this tournament because it's gonna take a good fighter to get him out of that comfort zone. This was heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number one. Next stop for Adams, the semifinal round later this year. Let's go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our ringside doctor has called a stop to this bout at the end of round number two. For your winner, by way of doctor stoppage, AJ Bomaye Adams. A 
officially goes down as TKO due to Dr. Stoppage. Four minutes, two minutes of round number two. Four minutes into this fight, DJ Linderman wanted to continue. The Wyoming Commission ringside physician feeling otherwise stopping this fight. And again, truly, this is a brutal sport, but yes, it is it. safety first. Yeah, and you know, like I said, what a way to start tonight's uh, championship fights with, with that great contest right there. And I said it again earlier, he's going to be in better shape the next time because he knows what he's facing. He's going to have a date. He's going to have to get ready. He's going to be someone to really reckon with in this tournament. Arnold A.J. Adams through to the heavyweight tournament semifinal round. Again, that heavyweight tournament will play out throughout 2018 in the squared circle. We now move to the welterweight division. This bout has all of the ingredients <laughs> to be something truly special. Estevan Payan versus Omar Avelar. Two fighters experienced in MMA, experienced Ladies in professional and boxing. Please welcome to the squared circle, Omar Avelar. Omar Avilar, 22 pro MMA fights, 20 pro boxing bouts. Said that he would have fought for free on this card just to be part of history, and he meant it. He actually said that to our promoter. Your knuckle fighting championship CEO, Dez Feldman. Feldman, though, did offer to pay Avilar, and he wound up accepting. Probably a good decision. <laughs> Avilar, in our fighter meeting, described himself as reckless. But then he smiled and said, I'm trying to be less so, but that's pretty much who I am. I like to stand and bang and go wide open. Avilar said, I want to impose my will early, swing big, and look for the quick knockout. How you feel, man? Ready to go? Not me? Okay, man. Good luck to you, all right? And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent, Esteban Faya. Devon Payon, 30 career pro MMA fights. Fought three times for both the UFC and Bellator. Fought twice in Strike Force. Payon actually fought on the very first Bellator card in 2009. He's also had seven fights as a professional boxer. Payon, renowned, is an extremely aggressive fighter. He said, I like constant forward movement, but with punches. I think both of these guys are coming to bring it. They didn't, uh, they didn't have no fanfare at the weigh-ins <laughs> earlier yesterday, so they want to get at each other really bad. Genuine animosity between these two fighters. Payan spent seven years in the United States Army, three tours of duty in Iraq. He said of Avilar, he likes to swing his word crazy. Get off, he'll get off balance. Payan told me in preparation for his bare knuckle debut champ, he's been hitting a steel beam daily. Man, well, <laughs> that ain't gonna bend. <laughs> Bout number two, BKFC, the beginning, our tale of the tape. Esteban Payan versus Omar Avilar in the welterweight division. Uh, the tale of the tape, uh, just the height advantage for Payan. He's got uh, five inches on Avilar, so that stands out for me with the, on the tale of the tape. He got to use that height advantage if he's going to uh, dominate tonight. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Fight fans of Cheyenne and our fight fans like watching worldwide on pay-per-view. We are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division. And this fight is brought to you by Corona La Cerveza Mas Fina. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in gold. He stands five feet, five inches tall. His official weight, 164.8 pounds. As an MMA and boxing veteran, he holds 58 professional fights. He fights out of Othello, Washington. Please welcome Omar, the Dice King, Avila. And 
and across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears orange trimmed in red and black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 163 pounds. His impressive MMA record stands at 17 victories opposite 12 defeats. Seven wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, he is a UFC, Bellator, Strike Force, and World Series of Fighting Veteran, Esteban El Teible Paya. And our referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. All right, gentlemen, total line. You ready, sir? You ready, sir? Knuckle up! The bell in round number one. To the surprise of no one, a quick start for Estevan Payon. Oh. Yellow and orange trunks for Payon. Black and gold for Avilar comes swinging back. We thought this would be a firefight at Ix. Smile on the face of Payon. All forward pressure for Payon. Off of the jab, clubbing with the left hand. Avalar gonna have to find a way to get inside and that overhand right like that'll do it. Avilar ducking his head. Single-minded forward pressure from Payon. Now Avilar swinging to no avail. To the body goes Payon. Uppercut. Avilar covering up, circles out. 65 seconds remaining round number one. Indeed, these two minute rounds definitely fly by. Wait traffic at the moment inside the squared circle. Just no offense thus far for Omar Avilar. With no pattern on those knuckles, it's gonna be important for both of these fighters to land those sharp shots and place those punches. You don't wanna be hitting on top of someone's head. And we even heard a couple fighters say they're gonna duck their head when the punches are coming. So, gotta be careful of that. Avilar ducked there, but to try to circle out. Avilar to the body, check left, hook from Payon. Forward again with the right hand, clever turn okay. from Avilar. Step out, step, knuckle. 25 seconds remaining round one, again forward pressure from Esteban, pa Esteban Payon. Take on the overhand right from Avilar. Straight punches champ from Payon. That overhand right, he's trying to sneak it in. Big shots and down goes Avilar, and Bill Clancy starts his count. Remember, fighters cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The bell goes, that is it. Game, set, match, Estevan Payar. Very impressive. We thought it would be quick. Indeed, it was a first round finish for Payon. Very you see Stitch Duran. This is the action that we expected. Big exhale from Estevan Payon. Felt that he had the game plan, Antonio. Indeed, he implemented that game plan. All heavy forward pressure. Yeah, that pressure was something to deal with. It was back and forth for the first half. Oh, those are two solid. Look like a one-two. He's hitting and holding, though. I don't know. <laughs> Right there, you see his hand. He landed some clean shots inside. And Avalar had his head ducked down. He couldn't see him coming. I think that affected him more so than anything. Let's go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Bill Clancy, has reached the count of 10 at 1 minute 57 seconds into round number one for your winner by way of knockout, Esteban El Teible Baya. Good job, good fight, good fight, man. Right here, sir. There you go. Esteban Payon, known for his extreme aggressiveness in MMA, and now known for that extreme aggressiveness here in bare knuckle. And what I'm seeing in bare knuckle is if you think it doesn't take technique and skill 
to be uh, to be uh, to win in this game, think again, because that's what we've seen so far in these two fights. Two fights, two finishes. So glad that you're with us so alongside the champ. Five-time two-division boxing world champion, the great Antonio Tarver. I'm Sean Wheelock. You're with us watching live around the world. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. It's BKFC, the beginning. An absolutely jam-packed and electrified Cheyenne Ice and Event Center in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Tonight marks not only the beginning of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, and again, it certainly bears repeating the first legal sanctioned and regulated bare knuckle fight card ever. It also opens BKFC eight man heavyweight tournament. Our opening bout quarterfinal number one. You saw the victory for Arnold Adams by way of TKO. Two minutes round number two, Dr. Stoppage. He defeated DJ Linderman. We will see the other three quarterfinals tonight in this tournament, champ. Man, I'm excited, man. Everything's heating up like we thought it would. And these guys are showing real hard in here, man. They're putting their punches together. And so far, no one's hurt their hands so far. So I was kind of concerned about that. Up next, heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number two, Maurice Jackson versus Dale Soapy. Rapid fire pace, much like 25 years ago in McNichols Arena in Denver, Colorado, about 110 miles south of here, although McNichols Arena no longer stands. November 12th, 1993, it was UFC 1, the first ever Ultimate Fighting wow. Championship. Champ, no one was quite sure how long those fights would go. Right. The same thing 25 years later. None of us were really sure how long these fights would go. We thought the Pion fight would be quick, indeed it was, but again, a lot of questions. We know how they fight in boxing, we know how they fight in MMA and kickboxing, how they fight in bare knuckle remains to be seen. It's a completely different combat it, sport. It is, but it's, at the same time, it's exciting. As long as you're having exciting fights, you're gonna have the people come out and support it. You see Dale Soapy, four of his career six pro MMA wins by way of TKO or straight knockout, coming in under two minutes. There you see Maurice Jackson, six foot nine. Wow. Played professional basketball in Mexican in the Republic of Ireland. Went to an NBA training camp with the Utah Jazz. Holds a career pro boxing, pro kickboxing record of 31 and one with 23 KOs. Also has had eight pro MMA fights, including one in Bellator. These two fighters really like and respect each other. They call themselves close friends, but they said, make no mistakes, it will be all business inside the squared circle, and then our friendship will resume after the fight. And that's how it usually is when you get in here, you got landed all on the line, and one of these guys want to advance. So that friendship is out the door, man. It's time to knuckle up and <laughs> toe the line. Heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number two, Maurice Jackson versus Dale Sophie and our tail of the tape. Wow, you know, this just, uh, the tail of the tape is off the chart for Maurice Jackson. He has every advantage in this fight, you would think, with this height, with this weight, and even with this reach. So uh, it's his to lose tonight, but I know Sophie is coming to take control, and we'll see how he's gonna get that done. Again, here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is a heavyweight tournament quarterfinal fight scheduled for five two-minute rounds. And it is brought to you by KO Distilling featuring Bear Knuckle Whiskey. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears solid black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 269.4 pounds. His MMA record stands at six victories, opposite four defeats with four wins by knockout. Fighting out of Nanakuli, Hawaii. By way of Tempe, Arizona, here is Dale Soapy. And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white trimmed in black. He stands six feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 267.2 pounds. 
His kickboxing record is a legendary one at 31 and 1 with 23 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Please welcome Maurice the Gorilla Jackson. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. All right, gentlemen. Toe the line, please. You ready? You ready? Let's go, knuckle up. The bell in round number one, and make no mistake, this fight all about range. Jackson wants it to the outside, Soapy nice, wants it to nice, the inside, and comes to the nice, inside. Nice, nice. All for a break and immediately so from Dan Mergliata. And if history repeats itself, we know Sophie like to get it done quick. Overhand right to the inside. There Jackson you. fainting with a bolo punch, and again, already clowning his close friend. Clever turn from Maurice Jackson. But Maurice, there you go. He's going to have to stick that jab out there. He just can't let Sophie get in there without taking some punishment to get inside. White trunks for Jackson, black trunks for Soapy. 45 seconds gone, round number one. Stiff left hand oh. from Jackson. Big oh, right he's hand. out. Dan Mergliata ruling that correctly in knockdown. The ring rope kept Soapy from falling. Hands up. Step this way. All right, face me. Now, please. OK, you good? You good? All right, let's go. Jackson. Jackson, I thought the Jackson got to jump on him if you want to get him out of there. That is it! Just like that! <laughs> and the win for Maurice Jackson! Next stop, the semifinal round. You know what? He never recovered from that. He was hurt. Time, sir. Minute 10. Thank you. Sorry. One minute, 10 seconds. Were they not supposed to come and toe the line again? After the eight count? After the eight count, they can stay where they are. Champ, it's towing the line. After the round. It's the traditional up to scratch from the Brock rules and the London Prize ring rules, beginning of every round, beginning of every fight. That right hand landed right on the kick, two straight. Very effective shots. Watch how he steps up. It's right there, short and crisp, and comes right back with it. That Vicious. right hand found the home. It was beautiful. Vicious and beautiful on that right hand from Maurice Jackson. <laughs> Sophie said, I've got a hard head and a big heart. But he simply could not withstand that right hand from Jackson. I'm not sure anyone Ooh. could. Man, the accuracy on Jackson punches, man. I mean. That had nothing to do with the heart of Sophie. He does have a big heart. That had everything to do with the right hand of Jackson. And he might have a, a hard head, but his chin is suspect. Let's go back to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata, steps in and calls a stop to the bout at 1 minute 10 seconds, round number one. For your winner, by technical knockout, Maurice the Gorilla Jackson. <laughs> and how many fights we have on the card tonight? <laughs> Three down, seven to go, and we're moving quickly here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Real quick. Here's Ron Kroc. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Maurice Jackson, you are 31 and 1 in kickboxing. You've had a great success in that sport. You come in here tonight and get things done very quickly. Tell us how you did it, my man. I just worked a lot on my jab. I trained with a lot of professional boxers. And there was days my coach, he made me spar the whole day just using my jab hand. I can't use nothing else. My left shoulder is still sore from jabbing so much my left hand. And I just did everything. I started brushing my teeth with my left hand. I, my, me and my wife, we just had twins. I carry not the left one in my arm like this. And, yeah, so I mean, you know, I just uh, put everything I had in this, and, and it's been like a, it's went through like a long three-year struggle, man. I'm just so happy to be back on top and just, you know, come here and just prevail victory, you know. Big win for sure. Give us a little idea. Listen, you have done kickboxing. You were in the played major basketball. Um, tell us for you personally. I mean, what was it like preparing for a bare knuckle boxing match? Honestly, 
you just when you're when you're training, you just think, oh, it's a boxing match. And when you get here and you watch some videos on YouTube, you're like, damn. They're like, oh my god, like yeah. So like uh, earlier this day, I was I was laying in my bed. I was so nervous. I called my mom. She prayed. I prayed a million times. <laughs> more nervous than before a basketball game? Way more. Way more, because if somebody mess up, you can blame somebody else. This is all you. Whatever you do in the gym is going to show out here. Yeah. All right, Maurice Jackson, congratulations. Big win for you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Okay, Sean, back to you, buddy. Thank you, Ron. Maurice Jackson, a big personality and indeed a big right hand, Antonio. Man, and he said it. He's gone through some struggles in the last three years, so it's nice to see a guy pick himself up. And look, oh, again, those short right hands, devastating. And Soapy never recovered. He was hurt right there, and he finished strong. Love what I saw out of Jackson tonight. There you see the confirmation of that close friendship. Immediately, Jackson stepping in and consoling his friend. Soapy never went down. Now, Dan Morgliata correctly ruled that on the first knockdown, the ring rope kept Soapy from falling. But to his credit, to his big heart and hard head, he never touched the canvas. Uh, yes, and, and you got to commend him on that. Next up, lightweights, 135 pounders. Reggie Barnett Jr. versus Travis Thompson. And this is the one we was looking forward to, man. We think this is going to be one of the fights of the night because Barnett said he's coming here to take everything Thomas has. And Thompson is a veteran. He's been there. Travis Thompson. A very good collegiate wrestler at Millersville University of Pennsylvania. Three and one in pro MMA, has had 22 professional boxing bouts. Thompson said, I think of myself as a boxer, not a mixed martial artist. Yeah, I talked to him earlier this week, man, and he seemed like he has his head on his shoulder. And uh, he weighed it yesterday. He looks great, he looks fit, and he's ready to go. Thompson said, I'm largely a brawler with a relentless style. I want to fight on the inside, put heavy pressure on my opponent, Reggie Barnett Jr. He said, if Barnett comes forward, I welcome that forward pressure. My power will see me through to victory. When I sum up Travis Thompson, I just say he's a hard, hard man. And he's going to be tough for anybody to beat tonight. <laughs> he's fired up. Travis the Animal Thompson. Reggie Barnett Jr. Six and one in pro boxing. He's the current U.S. Boxing Union 130-pound champion. He's had seven career pro MMA bouts, but like Thompson, as a two combat sport athlete, he considers himself a boxer first, mixed martial artist second. Reggie Barnett Jr. said in our fighter meeting, I'm cerebral but aggressive. I want to stay long. Everything needs to come off of my jab. I will, quote, systematically pick apart Travis Thompson. He's a guy with seven pro boxing uh, fights. He's six and one. That's a great record. And uh, talking to him earlier, he has his uh, support that came from Virginia. He has his videographer. He has everything it takes. He just need a big win tonight, and he's on his way. As Estevan Payan was punching a steel beam, Reggie Barnett Jr. in training has been punching a brick wall every day for three and a half minutes. I asked him why three and a half minutes. He said, well, there's a song I like. It runs for three and a half minutes, so I punched the brick wall during that song. I would ask him why the brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> Our tale of the tape for this lightweight fight. They ready to go at it. Reggie Barnett Jr. versus Travis Thompson. Pretty even. You got a, a four-year advantage for age for Red, Reggie Barnett Jr. Other than that, this is a pick em fight. I mean, everything looks, looks to be even with height and reach. Well, yeah, one inch favoring Thompson. That's it. Back to the squared circle and Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division and is brought to you by Black Label Apparel. 
Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears red, trimmed in white and black. He stands five feet six inches tall. His official weight, 133.6 pounds. He is a professional boxing veteran of 21 fights. And tonight he fights out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Here is Travis the Animal Thompson. And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight wearing blue, trimmed in black and gray. He stands 5 feet 5 inches tall. His official weight uneven, 133 pounds. His boxing record stands at six victories opposite a single defeat. And he is also an MMA veteran of seven professional fights. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the USBU Super Featherweight Regional Champion, fighting out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Richie Easy Barnett Jr. And our referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. Seconds out. Fighters toe the line. Knuckle up. Immediate Whoa. start for Reggie Barnett Jr. Round number one. Blue trunks for Barnett. Red, white, and black trunks for Thompson. There's the break immediately from Bill Clancy. You can, see, you can see the boxing experience that Reggie Barnett has. Oh, he's and he's landing some sharp, sharp shots, a combination punching, I might add. Hands very high and tight for Reggie Barnett Jr. Big uppercut, another uppercut. You see the hit and hold half tie plum, that's legal. And look at the distance Reggie Barnett is having. Even when they're in close, he's at range to strike. Stiff left hand. It's going to be a tall order for Travis Thompson tonight. This guy has the experience as a boxer. And Thomas don't, is not going to be able to grapple and ground tonight. So you might be at a disadvantage from the stand-up position. Thompson, the last sequence, landed a nice uppercut on the inside, back to the outside. But again, it only takes one punch, and Thompson's going to have to, Thompson's going to, have to find that shot to slow Reggie Barnett Jr. down. 55 seconds remaining round one. We've not seen a round three through the first three fights of this card. Methodical pressure from Barnett Jr. Thompson trying to turn up the tempo. Swing and a miss, better head movement from Thompson. Yeah, he's gonna need that head movement. There he goes. He's gonna need that head movement. Oh, he got hit with a straight right hand. That one, two has been the ticket for Barnett so far. I said break when I say break. Thompson arguing with Clancy, asking why for the break. We fight on. Counters on the inside. There's the straight left from Barnett. Barnett, that in and out style is really working for him right now. Final seconds, round number one. All action. Reggie Barnett Jr. versus Travis Thompson in the lightweight division. There is the bell. Again, all bouts tonight, scheduled for five two-minute rounds. All are scored by three judges. Ringside on a 10-point must system. Tonight's judges have been assigned by the Wyoming MMA and Combative Sports Commission, headed by Brian Pedersen and Jeremy Arneson. A furious start to round number one, Antonio. Oh, yeah. Again, man, sure. <laughs> they told the lie. He went straight at him and caught him with a good one-two. And it's been that one-two that has controlled the first round for Barnett uh, you know, Jr. Now, Thompson's gonna have to get between the uh, rounds right here and find a plan, some type of plan, to slow Barnett Jr. down. He's having his way right now after that first round. And you see this modern sport with roots in the 17 and 1800s, bringing back the scratch line. Towing the line up to scratch to start every fight, every round. Just like in the Broughton rules, the London prize ring rules. And you see what that produces. Again, Barnett Jr. to the inside. More aggression, though, from Thompson using that wrestling. I, I think that serves him well. He's going to he's gonna have to stay in close so, he, so Barnett Jr. doesn't have the reach that he had. He's going to have to close the gap and do some inside work. If not, only slow Barnett down a little bit. Barnett missing with the right hook from the southpaw stance. Clubbing left hand from Thompson, stepping in with the left. Counter right. 
Barnett Champ finding his timing on the counters. Yeah, he's showing his punches up. He's not reaching. He's doing all this stuff right off, off on balance and in position. He's not reaching over his body, so it's hard to counter a guy that's not giving you that much to counter. And again, it's the boxing experience. Short left hand starts that sequence. Bill Clancy telling Thompson, keep your punches up. Just like in traditional boxing, you can only target above the waist. No punches to the hips, the thighs, the legs. Thomas is going to have to try to find a way to counter Barnett. I know that's going to be a difficult task, but he's going to have to get him reaching and counter him if he's going to turn this fight around. 30 seconds remaining round two. Will we see our first round number three of the night? Left hand from Travis Thompson coming forward. This fight starting to settle into a rhythm. Barnett settling into the role of the effective counter puncher. Travis Thompson trying to push forward the action. He got to get that jab going to close the distance. He's reaching right there. He needs to jab once, two, maybe three times to get closer. The bell, the end of round two. Here's Ron Crook. Thanks, Sean. Bare Knuckle Boxing 101. This is the man you need to know. 71 and 0, Bobby Gunn. Bobby, you have dominated this sport for so long. Why is that? I, I mastered it because I was born and bred into it. Bare Knuckle Boxing is an art, and I'm so glad tonight people's going to see my art. You fought underground. Tonight, you fight above the ground. What does it mean to you and the sport that it has now been sanctioned by a state athletic commission? I've been beating this drum for so years to help get this where it is. I'm so happy young fighters now, instead of being in the shadows, they can be in the light. I'm so happy to be a part of this history. We are excited to see you in action. What are you going to do? What's going to be the key to your victory tonight? You know, I'm going to try to jump on him real fast and go like kind of like Joe Frazier and Tyson. He's a tall, big fella. He fought Joseph Parker and Dylan White. 19 wins, 17 knockouts in the pros. I don't care if he knocked his grandmother out, he can punch, you know? <laughs> yes, he can. Bobby, best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Everybody, All right. Thank you. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Ron. Later tonight, you'll see it in the heavyweight division. Bobby Gunn, widely recognized as the lineal bare knuckle boxing heavyweight champion, versus the Brazilian professional boxer Eddie Deao, Beato Costa. Round number three Reggie Barnett Jr. versus Travis Thompson. Man, it must be frustrating. Must be frustrating for Thompson. Every time he tries to get in, he's getting, he's eating punches. I mean, he's staying, he's staying the course, though. He hasn't really given up. Time called by Bill Clancy, detecting an eye poke. You see Thompson favoring his left eye. Take a look at it. He got, he got fingered in the eye. I understand. I got it. He got poked in the eye. When you have your fist out at chest level or above, make sure your fingers are in. You accidentally hit him in the eye, okay? Thompson now accident. has up to five minutes to recover. Accidental line poke. Again, two physicians here from the state of Wyoming assigned to this card. All right, fiddle ring. Accidental, just go right here. Ruled as accidental by Bill Clancy. Thompson is ready to continue. Nice bit of refereeing by Clancy. Time in, round number three. Keep your fingers closed, waist and above. Swing and a miss from Thompson. Thompson's still reaching. He has to move in with that jab behind the jab. He's only jabbing once. Check left hook from Barnett. Again, forward pressure from Thompson. Barnett. Looking slick out of the southpaw stance, lands the right hand. Thompson again saying that he was fingered in the eye. Fifty-five seconds remaining, round three. Good body shot. Clancy telling Barnett Jr. keep your fist closed. It's way too far players. out. Way too far out for Thompson. Measured pace for Reggie Barnett Jr. Holding center of the squared circle. 
I think any part, any part of Barnett Fish landing, he's saying it's a finger. <laughs> and champ, you can see Thompson desperate to fight on the inside, trying to find a way through. Yeah, again, his balance a little bit off balance. And again, he has to push off that. Look, right there, he's reaching. He's not in close enough. Sometimes you have to double jab, triple jab to get in. Double jab with the right hand on cue from Barnett. Thompson nicely done on the level change. This is bare knuckle, though. It only take one shot. Losing seconds, round number three. Good right hand from Barnett. We are headed to round four. Go back to our fighter meetings. Travis Thompson said, I want to make this a brawl. Barnett said, I don't want to brawl. I want to systematically pick apart Thompson. And he's definitely doing that. Systematically, he's doing that. He's not allowing Thompson to get in his fight. And here you see it, angles. Now, right there, you do see his hands open right there. And you saw the finger did go in his eye because he was trying to grab him instead of punching him. Yeah, that's again, yeah, he's he's poking him with an open hand. That can't be tolerated. This sport is already dangerous enough. You don't want to be getting jabbed in the, in the eye with the finger. Into the corner of Travis Thompson. Just heard the seconds out whistle. Two minute rounds, 60 seconds between rounds. To the scratch line. Both fighters towing the line. Repositioning from Reggie Barnett Jr. Round number four and a quick start from Travis Thompson. But again, those sharp, crisp shots on balance. You can't even get a counter punch off on Barnett because he's not reaching. Swelling under the left eye of Thompson. You see the open hands, Barnett looking to parry those punches. Stick and move, the circles, the angles from Barnett. Okay, now that's good. You see him moving the head movement and he's stepping with that with his body. That's how you can get closer also. If you're not gonna jab, you gotta move, but break at the same time. Still eating that jab though. You see the head movement? Thompson looking to level change again. Trying to make this an inside fight, eating that combination from Barnett. As a really nasty mouse under the left eye of Thompson. Reggie Barnett Jr.'s face champ looks quite clean at this point. Yeah, he hadn't been hit with anything solid. And it's that boxing IQ right now that's playing a, a big role for him. Forty-five seconds remaining round four. Barnett Jr. continuing to keep this an outside fight. Use his speed from the southpaw stance. Use those long straight punches from range. Thompson trying to find him with that jab, that herky-jerky movement. But Barnett is on his game tonight. There you go. Step in left hand from Thompson. Again, the counter. Hands high and tight for Reggie Barnett Jr. To the body with the left hand, almost a bolo punch. Ten seconds. Closing stages, round number four. Five seconds, stop at the bell. Yeah, Th Thompson wearing it on his face right now, swelling up very, very quick. We are headed to the fifth and final round. Champ Travis Thompson said he would welcome forward movement from Barnett in this fight, but Barnett comes forward and then he's immediately back outside, back to range. Man, Barnett is like in and out. <laughs> he's like in and out, angles, you know, turning him, and he's keeping those short, crisp combination. They're not major power punches, they're just multi-punches, multiple punches coming from every angle. He's been a tough puzzle to solve tonight. See the fighters, Chief second, his father exiting first, Reggie Barnett Sr. Confirmation of our fifth and final round. Here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, sold out the Cheyenne Ice and Event Center. Showing the line first, up to scratch first. Reggie Barnett Jr. trying to send a message. Oh yeah, he's sending that message. I'm in shape and I'm ready to finish this fight off. Last round. Before we knuckle up, let's touch him up, all right? Don't we'll let your brother wait on the mic, come in, baby. You are in. Touch him up, knuckle up. 
Talk back and forth. Fifth and final round. It's been very entertaining thus far through the opening four rounds in eight minutes. And a quick start to round five for Reggie Barnett Jr. I think Barnett's looking for the knockout, but he can't get careless. Left hand now a right, big left hand on the inside. Took Thompson off his striking line and resets. I think speed has been the difference in this fight. And hand speed is, is incredible for Barnett Jr. right now. Thompson trying to go to the body. Can you see the duck under the level changes from Thompson? Still trying to work his way in. Oh, he's not giving up on his game plan. It just hasn't worked out for him tonight thus far. But he has that type of power where he can land one sharp shot and it could be over. Good right hand, then the left to follow from Barnett. Quick combinations. Maximum of 65 seconds remaining in this fight. Barnett just looked over to his corner. First time we've seen him break eye contact in this fight. Thompson has been taking two or three to get one, but that one hasn't came. Short right hand. Well, you can see that mouse, but it has not popped under the left eye of Travis Thompson. Big right hand, and then he pays for it with his short right on the counter from Barnett. That's what he needs, one of those big punches to land right now. I think Thompson's got to get back to the drawing board and get some real boxing skills. He's switching to southpaw right now. He's trying everything he with 30 seconds to, to left. With 30 seconds to left, he's trying everything. Big heart, big heart from the guy. Huge heart from Travis Thompson. But the speed, the quickness, the straight punches, the class of Reggie Barnett Jr. largely showing through in this fight. Thompson still game. Back to the orthodox stance. Still trying to work to his credit to the inside. Man, you gotta Final seconds. You got to take your head off the turns. As bad as this fight has been for him, he hadn't given up. He's shown heart of a champion. I like to work with the guy. You really give him some technical work. You can see a different fighter the next time around. Great fight. Outstanding fight. A punch after the bell for good measure. And that's a nice scene, nice show of friendship and sportsmanship between Reggie Barnett Jr. and Travis Thompson. Take you back to round five. Right there, that is the speed. A lot of stuff wasn't landing at that time. But Thompson never landed the shot he was looking for. And I'm, I can imagine it was frustrating in there tonight. Straight left hand by Barnett. Good combination punches from the southpaw. But you got to take your head off. Thompson never gave up. He never stopped trying. He just was out of his league tonight from a boxing standpoint, a technical standpoint. Reggie Barnett Jr. now playing to the Cheyenne, Wyoming crowd. Champ, perhaps there is something to punching a brick wall every day for three and a half minutes. <laughs> they call him easy, man. He just made a heck of a debut in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship tonight. And I think he earned a lot of fans tonight because people can see he has the goods. He has the goods. We wait to tabulation of the three State of Wyoming assigned judges. Really no suspense, though, after those five two-minute Love rounds. to see the doctor, even though Barnett didn't take any punishment, the doctor is concerned about his hands because they're bare knuckle, and if you hurt your hands, you're out of business, baby. With the official decision, we go into the squared circle and Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, our judges at ringside are all in agreement, scoring the bout 50 to 45 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Reggie E.C. Barnett Jr. 50-45, 5-0 across the board. An outstanding performance and victory for Reggie Barnett Jr. And he told me to look out for him, man. He's going to steal the show. He said it's going to be his night. He did everything he wanted to do tonight. And I like the fact that he was defensive-minded at the same time. He didn't take much punishment tonight. 
Barnett so efficiently and effectively laid out and executed his game plan, stay long, work long off the jab, pick apart Thompson, use footwork, use counterpunching with aggression. Yes. At the end of the day, skills still pay the bills. <laughs> So our first fight to go to the judges scorecards. You see the elated Reggie Barnett Jr. in victory. Take nothing away from Travis the Animal Thompson. Just simply could not get inside and stay inside against Barnett in this fight. Showed Listen a lot to the of crowd. And a lot of heart though. Listen to the crowd. They really appreciate what they just witnessed from Barnett Jr. Up next, we will stay in the lightweight division. Johnny Bedford versus, from right here in Wyoming, Nick Mamelis. That also at 135 pounds. History being made tonight here at the Cheyenne Ice and Event Center, which is sold out in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, BKFC, the beginning. There is Nick Mamelis from Green River, Wyoming. 29 wins in his pro MMA career. Fought four times in Bellator. Mamela has said, I'm a huge fan of cowboy movies. I love reading about the Old West. I love the mystique of bare knuckle fighting. It feels like the Old West to me. Mamela has told me in training, he's put a premium on cardio. He believes he will have the advantage in the clinch. Not only 29 wins in his pro MMA career, Mam was a three-time Wyoming High School State Wrestling Champion. He wants to make this an inside fight. Mam was set for him. All about dirty boxing against that man, his opponent, Johnny Bedford. Bedford, 22 wins in his pro MMA career. Fought six times in the UFC and once in Bellator. Bedford, though, said, even though he has not had a professional boxing match, I'm really a boxer and not a wrestler or a grappler in mixed martial arts. He said, I feel that I have the toughness, champ, for bare knuckle that I believe Nick Mamelis lacks. Again, that's Bedford saying that. He just felt that he was simply tougher, more rugged, more cut out for bare knuckle. Well, I mean, uh, they all say that until they get in the ring, <laughs> into the square circle, I mean. Well, that's a great way to come in. Bedford also a great wrestling pedigree, wrestled at Cleveland State University, teammates with the current UFC heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. Our tale of the tape for this lightweight fight, Johnny Bedford versus Nick Mamelis. Uh, pretty even on the uh, tale of the tape. I see a four-year advantage uh, for Monop Monopolis, and uh, that's about it. The reach is uh, pretty much the same, other than like a three-inch reach advantage. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division and is brought to you by the United States Air Force AIM High. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight wearing red trimmed in black. He stands five feet six inches tall, his official weight, 137.4 pounds. His MMA record stands at 29 victories opposite 13 defeats with one no contest, nine wins by way of knockout. Fighting out of Green River, Wyoming, please welcome Nick Mamali. And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black, trimmed in red and yellow. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, an identical 137.4 pounds. His MMA professional record stands at 23 victories, opposite 14 defeats with one draw. Nine wins by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the UFC veteran fighting out of North Richland Hills, Texas, Johnny Bruno Bedford. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. All right, gentlemen, let's go, toe the line. Hands up, you ready? Knuckle up. Round number one. Black and multicolored trunks for Bedford. Ooh. Red trunks, black trim for Mamelis. Mamelis immediately to the inside. 
There's the dirty boxing he talked about. Call for break from Dan Mergliotta. Dirty champ, you could see the level change attempts from Bedford, dipping that front shoulder. Smirk on the face of Bedford. Yeah, Bedford is a guy very confident. You can see that. We call it swag. And that jab, that left jab is real crisp. Ooh. Right hand gets through from Bedford. That momentarily stopped Mamelis. Bedford threw that right hand with deadly intentions. See the confidence of Bedford? Hands below his waist, sticking his chin out. And what that does is give uh, Monopolis a false sense of security. And when he throws punches, he's going to be there for the counter. He wants him to throw right now. The left hook from Mamelis. Bedford continuing to clown his opponent, Nick Mamelis. I think Mamelis is a little bit overwhelmed right now, just at the slickness that Bedford is showing right now. Switches stances for Mamelis into the southpaw stance, back to orthodox. I don't think you saw that in MMA. <laughs> slickness, <laughs> the head movement. 40 seconds remaining round one. And was trying to counter. Man, Bedford looks sharp tonight. He went under and over with that right hand. Man was still looking for his timing. Stiff left hand from Bedford. Right to the body. Double jab that time from Bedford. Definitely feeling it here in round number one. And as that jab, that's bust. Monopoly's no, ooh, good left hook. Mamelis bleeding out of his left nostril. Final seconds, round number one. Good left hook from Mamelis. That excites the Cheyenne Wyoming crowd against their in-state favorite. <laughs> Again, the clowning from Bedford. The faint nothing there. Shuffle step. Man, I love the action we see in the night. <laughs> the end of round one, and we send it again to Ron Kruk. Thank you, Sean. Our co-main event tonight, this lady, Beck Rawlings, will be taking on a boxer in Alma Garcia. Beck, you fought in Invicta. You're a UFC veteran. What made you want to get involved with the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship? Uh, look, I think this sport's made for me. I love to box. I hit hard, I'm fast, and I'm tenacious. And I think that all plays into this sport, especially with bare knuckle. I think I can really um, put a stamp on, on bare knuckle boxing. Everyone has their unique ways of preparing for this sport. One guy was training by hitting a brick wall. Specifically, what did you to prepare for this evening? You know, we predominantly focused on boxing, obviously, but um, yeah, I've been doing iron palm training to strengthen up my hands. But, you know, we just did a lot of boxing, a lot of uh, bare knuckle drilling. With that said, it is, uh, you're taking on a boxer. She's very tough. How do you beat Garcia? I'm going to put her on her ass with my right hand. There you go. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Ron. Right, go, Coming up go, in our co-main event, Beck Rawlings will face right, that woman, Alma Garcia, veteran of seven professional wow. boxing bouts. Set in the women's featherweight division, 125 pounds. This, men's 135 pounders. UFC veteran Johnny Bedford versus Bellator veteran Nick Mamelis. Bedford also did fight once in Bellator. His home state of Texas, his adopted home state in 2010. And hats off to the matchmaker so far, man. We've had some great matchups tonight. Mamelis eating body shots there and pushed away. Blood continuing to flow freely out of his left nostril. Here's Bedford to the inside. Big uppercuts and down goes Mamelis. First knockdown of the fight. Mamelis bleeding out of his left nostril, now cut outside of his left brow, and to his credit, right back to his feet, center of the squared circle, hands high. Mamelis, though, just struggling to find his timing. Yeah, I think Mamelis is going to have to move, give some lateral movement right now. Don't just stand straight in front of this guy. Try to find a counter shot here and there. Mamelis also cut under his left eye, and blood flowing freely now out of the cut from his left brow. Bedford proving a very elusive and frustrating target for Mamelis in this fight. 30 seconds remaining round two. Right, right there, he just can't take those shots. He's got to use his legs to Big get out Big shots, and down goes Mamelis for the second time in this fight. 
Bedford just said he's done. We shall see. <laughs> Namalus up. I think the, the stool is in. I think the referee stopped it. No confirmation yet from Dan Mergliotta, but it looks to be the case. This fight is over, and the win to Johnny Bedford just like that. Wow. It was clean boxing, clean punching that did the job. Those bare knuckles, it don't take many. He chopped him up then. Johnny Bedford, after a very impressive round one, turning up the temperature in round two. Champ dropping Mamlas twice in the second round. Yeah, again, every time he got close, he let those hands go. It just seemed like this guy has a, 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 a lot of experience in, in, in boxing. And this is a, a barrage of punches right here that came from everywhere. And Mamlas had landed a good left hit. Left hook that just didn't have no damage. Wasn't effective. And he ate about four or five clean shots right there. Credit to Nick Mamlis. He's a very talented professional MMA fighter. Huge heart, extremely competitive. Just simply overwhelmed in this bare knuckle fight versus Johnny Bedford. Yeah, Bedford showed it all, man. Uh, footwork, showed confidence, he let his hands down. I mean, he's a seasoned guy in there, and I mean, I want to see who he's going to fight next. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Bergliana, steps in and calls a stop to the bout at 1 minute, 41 seconds, round number two. Pull your winner by technical knockout, Johnny Brutto. You hear the boos, but that's largely because Mamlis comes from here in Wyoming. There's really nothing to boo in that performance from Johnny Bedford unless you're the most ardent of Nick Mamlis supporters. <laughs> Johnny Bedford looking really impressive. Really sharp tonight. So the finishes continue. We've seen beyond round number two just twice tonight. In this, BKFC, our first ever bare knuckle fighting championship. It is BKFC, the beginning. Five fights, four finishes thus far on this 10 fight card. Headed your way in the heavyweight division, Bobby Gunn, widely recognized as the lineal bare knuckle boxing heavyweight champion will face the 19-win Brazilian professional boxer any day, Albiato Costa. Yeah, Costa has faced some major names in boxing. Dylan White, AJ, he's, he's facing monsters. Let's see if he can get past Bobby Gunn tonight. Any day, Albiato Costa. Of his 19 pro boxing wins, 17 coming by way of knockout, he is the former WBO Latino heavyweight champion. Costa in our fighter meeting, talked to me, but it was an interesting interview. Portuguese, Spanish, English in the blender, and we got it done. <laughs> Said I want a counter punch. Work from the mid-range. Mid-range then outside, mid-range then outside, never inside against Bobby Gunn for Costa. He said, I want to utilize tight defense. He said, I know that Gunn is very aggressive, but Costa said, I feel that I have more power in my punches. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great game plan to have because he has such a huge advantage, height, reach, weight, everything. He's gonna have to stay on the outside because we know Bobby Gunn's a tough, tough, tough guy. And if he gets inside, he know how to do damage. But it's gonna take mobility to do that. And I don't know if Costa has the mobility to move around consistently for five rounds. See our jam-packed crowd here at the Cheyenne Ice and Event Center, and now you see Bobby Gunn. The legend. 23 wins in professional boxing with 20 knockouts. He is the former IBA Cruiserweight World Champion. In bare knuckle boxing, he is a legend. Again, recognized as the lineal bare knuckle boxing heavyweight champion, Gunn claims a bare knuckle boxing record of 71 and 0 with 71 knockouts. 
Gunn said, I fought bare knuckle in mansions, on docks, in empty buildings and on gravel roads. He said, this is a fulfillment of a lifelong dream. Gunn said, bare knuckle fighting is in my culture and I am so proud and honored to bring it to the world. And he's carried that torch for years, man. I've, I've known him very, very well. But I just told him, man, I, I can't give you no pointers tonight, Bobby. <laughs> he all in my DM. <laughs> Bobby Gunn said that he will throw no harder than 40% on any of his punches. He said that he will target the forearms, the upper arms, and the shoulders early on of Costa, and then select when he wants to punch to the head. It is an extremely methodical approach and bare knuckle for Bobby Gunn. I know Bobby's on cloud nine right now, man, to be on pay-per-view and really, you know, carrying the flag for this sport. In the heavyweight so division, Bobby Gunn versus Eddie Day, Albiato Costa, and champion CR tail of the tape. Oh man, it's off the chart. Costa has all the advantages here, but Bobby Gunn has the experience, so we're gonna see how it plays out. History continues tonight in Cheyenne, Wyoming, in the squared circle. Back we go into that squared circle, and back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is a heavyweight special attraction scheduled for five two-minute rounds and is presented by Corona La Cerveza Mas Fina. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black, trimmed in gold and red. He stands six feet four inches tall. His official weight, 225.4 pounds. His professional boxing record stands at 19 victories, opposite seven defeats, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, please welcome Idideo Beato Costa! And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in silver. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 217.2 pounds. This warrior maintains an undefeated bare-knuckle boxing record of 71-0 with all 71 wins by way of knockout. He is recognized worldwide as the undisputed lineal bare-knuckle heavyweight champion of the world, the one, the only, Bobby Gunn! And our referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. Up east. Fighters total line. Bobby Gunn no. versus Eddie Day, Albiato Costa, round number one. Black and silver trunks for Gunn, black and red for the Brazilian Costa, and immediately forward oh. pressure to the body from Gunn, and down goes Costa. That looked like a sharp left hook to the body. And again, remember, Gunn said he's only going to throw it 40% to save his hands. He lied. <laughs> that was about 100%. Costa back to his feet. So a long way to go. 90 seconds remaining, round one. Look how Bobby's getting to the body, and again down goes Costa. That might be it. Costa staying flat on the canvas. Now posturing up. Costa down. That is it. Just like that, the legacy continues for the legend that is in bare knuckle fighting Bobby Gunn. He advances. He told me he changed his game plan. He had a uh, felt like he was fighting for someone else tonight. They say he had death in the family early, one of his cousins, so he was going to put the pressure on this guy and get him out of there. Some of the greatest fighters in the history of Fair Knuckle. John L. Sullivan, Jim Mace, John C. Heenan, James Figg, Tom Cribb, and standing with them, Bobby Gunn. A steamroller-like performance by the Canadian, now based in Hackensack, New Jersey. Yeah, that left to the liver right there. Oh, that was a nasty shot. That takes your breath and takes your legs immediately. Overhand right. I don't know what, I didn't really see anything devastating there, but the right hand did land over the top. Right on the top of the temple. Yeah, that could have got through there. Well, great job by Bobby Gunn. Bobby Gunn said in our fighter meeting, 
bare knuckle to boxing is as different as boxing to MMA. It's a completely different sport. Bobby Gunn putting on a clinical display in victory. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Mr. Bill Clancy, steps in and calls a stop to the bout at 41 seconds into round one for your winner by knockout, the one and only Bobby Gunn. He said he's the original Gypsy King. <laughs> Let's go to Ron. Okay, with the legend, Bobby Gunn. Bobby, you said that you were gonna throw your punches at about 40% to save your hands. My friend, that did not seem like 40%. Body shots dropped him quickly. Give us the details. Um, you know, he, he had 19 fights, uh, 19 wins, 17 knockouts. I, I watched him fight a few times YouTube. I figured I'd jump on him fast, so I'd get him out of there. And thank God, but I, I wanna tell everybody, I'm so thankful to be here tonight, but last Sunday, I, had, I was at church with one of my best friends in life named Alec Gregg. And his name is Wanderers Alec, his nickname. He died this morning. And I dedicate this fight to one of my best friends, Alec Gregg. A proper traveler boy, a legend. I love you, Alec. Well done, my man. Quickly, before we let you go, you have been the face of this sport for so long, but never on a platform like this. Here on pay-per-view in Wyoming, where the Athletic Commission has sanctioned this sport. How special is this for you? I love Wyoming. I want to become a resident here. I love it. I want to say something. We made history here tonight. Everybody here will be talked about for hundreds of years, man. This is great what we've done. Well done, my man. Congratulations. Enjoy this victory. And I love everybody here in Wyoming. I love you all. Every one of you. Wyoming, give it up for the legend, Bobby Gunn. Sean and Antonio, back to you. Thank you, Ron. Truly one of the nicest and classiest people in all of combat sports, Bobby Gunn. Devastating to the body. He deserved a spotlight, man. He uh, toiled out of the spotlight for so, ma so many years, but he's here now, and we can't wait to see him back. Bobby Gunn, the legend. Just no answers. Futile resistance from Indy Day Albiato Costa. One way traffic for Bobby Gunn in defeat in just 41 seconds. We will stay in the heavyweight division. Heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number three. A really intriguing bout headed your way. Eric Prindle versus Sam Shoemaker. Sam Shoemaker. 3-0 in professional boxing is an amateur. He won the Midwest Golden Gloves three times. Feels he has very clean technique for a heavyweight. That's going to serve him well tonight. It's going to serve him well tonight. Shoemaker told me, growing up in his home state of Missouri, he had somewhere, he estimates, between 15 and 20 organized underground bare knuckle fights. Ah. He said it was part of my family. My father did it, my uncle did it, I did it as a kid. I know how to fight bare knuckle. Awesome, awesome. Shoemaker has huge belief in his knockout power. He said, I respect the power, the size of Eric Prindle, but he fights relatively stiff, relatively moving forward. I need to keep hitting angles, let Prindle come to me, level changes, and then unload with my shots. Eric Prindle, you see his nickname, the American Soldier. Prindle proudly served in the United States Army, a five-time All-U.S. Army boxing champion. And Antonio, he was also a four-time All-U.S. Armed Forces boxing champion. Man, that takes a lot. I've, I've, I've had to fight a lot of those uh, Armed Forces guys, and they don't play. They get the best training, and they have the best tutors over there, the teachers over there. So this is going to be a tall order for, for Shoemaker but they both have boxing experience, so we'll see. Brindle has 21 career pro MMA fights. He won Bellator season five heavyweight tournament in 2011. He told me he has put a premium on cardio in this fight. He said, I see this as a chess match. I think my experience will see me through. Started with eight, six remains. The Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, BKFC Heavyweight Tournament. This is quarterfinal number three. 
our tale of the tape, Eric Prindle versus Sam Shoemaker. Well, both, well, both resembles each other. Like they can go for lost cousins. <laughs> they look so much alike. But uh, it, yeah, just uh, age right now, I think, sticks out with me and a four-inch uh, reach advantage for Prindle. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is a heavyweight tournament quarterfinal fight, and it is brought to you by KO Distilling, featuring Bare Knuckle Whiskey. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing the patriotic colors of the red, white, and blue. He stands six feet, three inches tall. His official weight, 235.6 pounds. He is undefeated as a professional boxer at 3-0. Fighting out of Gravois Mills, Missouri. Please welcome Sam, the Mountain Man, Shoemaker. And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears blue. He stands six feet four inches tall. His official weight, 259.1 pounds. His MMA record stands at 11 victories opposite nine defeats, six wins by knockout, and one no contest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Bellator Season 5 Heavyweight Tournament winner, fighting out of Scapoose, Oregon, Eric, the American Soldier, Brindle! And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. All right, gentlemen, let's toe the line. In your fighting stance, toe the line. Let's go. Ready, hands up. And buckle up. Round number one. Blue trunks for Prindle. American flag trunks for Shoemaker. And I've never seen Dan Mergliata look smaller, champ. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's cut up, man. A specimen of an athlete. Man, but I met both of these guys, and I can tell you, man. Oh, he's Huge out. Huge right hand. That might be game, set, match, if it is. Whoa. A one punch knockout win for Sam Shoemaker. One hit a quitter, baby. <laughs> there are knockouts, and then there are knockouts. <laughs> hey, that was Mike May Sports Center, baby. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful shot. Two incredibly powerful and accomplished fighters. And you saw the power from Shoemaker, and now you're seeing the class. The sportsmanship. Like I was saying before the knockout landed. Two of the nicest guys you want to meet, man. It was really. He set it up. He ducked it. He, oh, he just timed it perfectly. On the top of the temple. Oh, beautiful one punch shot. You don't get to see that often. That was a nice shot. Shoemaker told me that he was a baseball pitcher in his youth in Missouri, and he uses that baseball pitching technique just like that on his overhand right. On the right. kisser, on the kisser, right on the chin. Man, beautiful setup. Gotta love it. You gotta love it. Mergliano wisely not even counting. He knew that Prindle was done as did Shoemaker, immediately celebrating as soon as he landed that devastating right hand. <laughs> Into the semifinals, with authority goes Sam Shoemaker. See Daniel Gallimore, former Bellator fighter himself, now in Professional Fighters League. Consoling his good friend, he was working as Prindle's chief second. Devastating Antonio. He said he's going to buy him a beer later tonight. <laughs> and he will. And Prindle will happily accept. Let's go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, steps in and calls a stop to the bout at 18 seconds into round number one. Your winner by earth-shattering knockout, Sam the Mountain Man, Shoemaker. <laughs> big shoe, baby, big shoe. You see the real class there in defeat from Eric Prindle. Eric Prindle, I know him very well from mixed martial arts. 
When he defeated opponents, he would immediately run over and say, brother, are you okay? Did I hurt you? He's classy class in victory act. and classy in defeat. Class and act. the equal class shown by Sam Shoemaker in that victory with authority. Man, I hope everybody is watching up on pay-per-view. Follow Big Shoe. Sam Shoemaker, he'll be back. What a shot. And the celebration from Sam Shoemaker. He said, this is my coming out party. He's had just three pro boxing fights. He's never fought on television until tonight in any form. A lot of fight fans worldwide know Sam Shoemaker now, champ. Most definitely. All sometimes you need is a chance, man. And we're just thankful for David Fieldman, man, giving us this, this visionary of bare knuckle. And I think bare knuckle is here to stay, man, because if it's built on excitement, it's going to last. Wow. We're moving towards our co-main event of the evening. Women's featherweights, 125 pounders. The UFC and Invicta veteran. She was on season 20 of The Ultimate Fighter. The Australian, originally from Tasmania, now based in Brisbane. Beck Rawlings versus the professional boxer, seven career pro bouts, Alma Garcia. Right now, we send it backstage to our good friend, our broadcast partner, Ron Kruk. All right, guys, I'm joined by Damon Feldman, the brother of David Feldman, who, of course, is the president and founder of Bare Knuckle Boxing. Damon, this has to be an extremely satisfying night for you and your family. Oh, yeah. Can you put it in words? Listen, man, I'm almost in tears with what my brother's done. It's just incredible. Um, just so proud of him, man. All the hurdles he did to get up here is just amazing. But what he did tonight is history, and this is going to be around for a long time. You can see it up here. And it's giving guys opportunities. It's incredible. Damon, you are the creator of Celebrity Boxing, and now you have also written a book, The 16-Minute Man. Give us the details on the book. Yeah, real excited. You know, um, you know thanks to um, Sporty Smith, uh, Beef Real Entertainment, I was able to write my book, and they were talking about a biopic movie. It talks about my career as an undefeated professional fighter, getting injured in an accident, then getting into celebrity boxing, my dad, my mom being injured in an accident, uh, quadriplegic in a wheelchair our whole life, me and my brother, and uh, we got around hurdles. We're fighters. We never quit. And uh, look for my movie coming out, uh, The 16-Minute Man. It's a great people involved, and um, you go to DamonFeldman.com. Well, you mentioned it. The Feldman family has been involved in combat sports one way or another for so many years. I got to ask you, as you see this sellout crowd here in Wyoming, you're going to have your boxing fans, you're going to have your MMA fans, but do you feel that bare knuckle boxing can be as popular as those other sports? 100%, man. And now the new word in combat sports is David Feldman because he did it, you know, and I'm really excited, really emotional, man. My brother. He worked through everything to make this happen. He did it. Look around here. It's unbelievable. What this guy did is just amazing. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of him. Damon, enjoy this special night. Uh, it is. Thanks a lot. I'm real excited. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Great stuff, Ron. Thank you very much. So glad that you're with us watching in the United States, Canada, Australia, and indeed around the world. BKFC, the beginning, the first ever bare knuckle fighting championship event. The first fully recognized bare knuckle fight card since 1889 in the United States and the first ever legal sanctioned and regulated bare knuckle fighting event worldwide with the great Antonio Tarver. Five time two division boxing world champion along with Ron Kruk, our ring announcer Jeff Houston, I'm Sean Wheelock. It's been a night of finishes. We thought perhaps some fighters would play it safe. No one has played it safe tonight. Not tonight, they're going for it and they should. They should. Like I said, man, they're all trying to make their names. And a lot of these guys are coming back from maybe losses or, you know, uh, people have given up on them. And this is a chance of a lifetime for them to set their name out there to let people know that they're here with bare knuckle boxing, bare knuckle fighting, I'm sorry. And uh, like I said, it, it's here to stay. I'm excited. And I, you know, I've watched boxing for many, many years. And I haven't seen a one punch knockout like that, clean like that in a long time. So it happened tonight right here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. History upon history is we are counting down to tonight's co-main event, the first ever legal, sanctioned, and regulated women's bout. 
Female featherweights at 125 pounds, Beck Rawlings versus Alma Garcia. Hey, this is going to be a tough fight. I saw a little clips of Garcia shadow boxing in the back, and she know how to let those hands go. And I thought those seven professional boxing matches may be uh, a difference in this fight. So we'll see if Beck Rawlings, if Rawlings can handle that and have a, a, a puzzle, solve her puzzle tonight. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the squared circle, Oma Garcia. Oma Garcia has had seven professional boxing bouts, feels that she has very good power. She said, my best asset as a fighter is that I absolutely will never quit. I don't quit in training, I certainly don't quit in fights. Garcia Champ told me in our fighter meeting she feels that she will be much stronger on the inside than Rawlings. She said, I hope that Beck Rawlings comes in. I can obliterate her with my speed, turn her, showcase my power. That's a good game plan to have. I mean, like I say, I haven't seen her yet, but from what I saw with her just shadow boxing, it looks like her hands are educated. Beck Rawlings feels supremely confident in her skills and strategy as she enters tonight's first ever female bare knuckle fight. Um, you know, I think if anyone's tuned into any of my fights, they know I come to fight. Um, I'm not in there to play a game. I'm not in there to, to score points and, um, and draw out a decision. So you're going to see me come in there. I'm going to try and finish this girl. I'm going to lay these hands on her and um, see if she can handle, handle my hands bare knuckle. So you can And now ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring her opponent, Beck Rollings. A massive personality, Beck Rawlings. 15 career pro MMA bouts. She fought seven times in the UFC, three times in Invicta, and again. She was a cast member, season 20 of The Ultimate Fighter. Rawlings told me, training in her native Australia, in preparation for her bare knuckle debut, champ, she has been hitting sandbags bare fisted. That'll work. That'll toughen those knuckles right on up. Rawlings said that with her MMA grappling experience, she feels that she will have a big advantage in the clinch versus Alma Garcia. She also told me she expects Garcia to work behind the jab. She said, I want to throw feints, be very patient, come inside, block punches effectively, and then land my own significant strikes. Beck Rawlings said, from the UFC to BKFC, quote, I'm coming back with a vengeance. It is our co-main event of the night. Women's featherweights, Beck Rawlings versus Alma Garcia. Champ, you see the numbers. Perfect numbers, they, they, they match up very, very well. Uh, outside of uh, a five-year, four-year uh, four difference in age, with Garcia only being 25. Back we go to Jeff Houston. By fans of Cheyenne, we are now set for the co-main event of the evening. It is scheduled for five two minute rounds in the women's featherweight division and is brought to you by Black Label Apparel. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight she wears purple with white. She stands five feet four inches tall. Her official weight, 124 pounds. She is a boxing veteran of seven professional fights. She fights out of Denver, Colorado. Please welcome Alma Garcia. And across the squared circle, her opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight she wears black trimmed in silver. She stands five feet six inches tall. Her official weight, 124.8 pounds. She is an MMA veteran of 15 professional fights. She fights out of Brisbane, 
Queensland, Australia, by way of Tasmania. She is a UFC and Invicta FC veteran. Please welcome Rowdy Beck Rollins. And our referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. Ladies, toe the line. Wait for my command. If you're looking for number a slow-paced fight, this is not the fight for you. Round number one. Black and silver for Beck Rawlings. Quick start, white and purple for Alma Garcia. There's the ferocious pace we thought we would get. Big right hand from Garcia. Thudding shots, but hands high and tight. Champ for Rawlings. Good defense so far for Rawlings. Good defense. Garcia isn't wasting any time. She's trying to lay hands on her early. It looked like she brought the fans with her. A nice ovation when they announced her earlier. So we're gonna miss to the body from Garcia, trying to hook the ribcage. To the inside goes Garcia. Stiff jab in the right to follow. Classic one-two from Rawlings. 45 seconds gone round number one. A look of steely determination on the face of both fighters. Really nice exchanges early on in round one. See Garcia with the bounce in this step. Counters with the left. Excellent striking defense thus far from Rawlings. Blocking a lot of punches. Stepping into the pocket and trading. Big shots now. And Rawlings opening up. Countering right back goes Garcia. There's an opening undercut from the uppercut for Rollins if she want to use it. The fighters high and tight with their hands. Rollins opening up Garcia to the body. Rollins to the head. Ooh. Counter right hand from Alma Garcia. Stiff left jab from Rollins. 25 seconds There's remaining for Russia's round number one. Big uppercut. Great exchanges in there. Both fighters absolutely bombing from the pocket. Rollins again off the jab. Uppercut hook. Looked like Garcia suffering with uh, left eye damage. Garcia trying to fire back. More big straight punches from Beck Rawlings. Uppercut. Big hooks. Those are landing. And down goes Alma Garcia. Ruled a slip by Bill Clancy. That's the end of round one. Let's go to Ron Crook. All right, guys. With former UFC heavyweight champion Rico Rodriguez. Rico, I've covered your career from the early days. You have fought in the largest organizations on the biggest stages. Why bare knuckle boxing for you? Why not? It's a new platform. It's something brand new. I've been part of something that was nothing and made it something huge. I wasn't allowed to because of politics of certain individuals. Now I have another opportunity to, to perform on a high level. I'm the main event, so they're expecting me to sell the pay-per-views. I'm just blessed and happy with the opportunity. I'm going to go out and showcase my skills. I have been boxing, and uh, I'm just excited to be part of something historical. How have you prepared specifically for your opponent, Lewis Rums, and for this type of fight? I mean, I, I'm learning as I go along. I'm not going to sit here and BS you. Uh, you know, 81 professional fights, I think that's good enough for me to say I, I prepared enough. Not your first rodeo. No, not my first rodeo. Go out there, perform, and hopefully I just don't break nothing. God bless everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Rico. Guys, back to you. You'll see it tonight in our main event. Also, heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number four, Rico Rodriguez versus Lewis Rumsey. This is our co-main event, women's 125 pounders. Beck Rawlings versus Alma Garcia. Frantic two minutes to round one. Here we go with round number two. Well, I was concerned to see if Rawlings can handle the stand-up, man, but she's equipped, and I love the way she was poised early on. She let Garcia throw her load, and then she gave as good as she took. Garcia indeed trying to work off of the jab, leading out of her right nostril. Rawlings talked about that. She thought Garcia would try to sit behind the jab. Garcia now bleeding out of both nostrils. Rawlings showing a lot of patience in there. Showing under the right eye of Rawlings. Both fighters taking and receiving. Big right hand on the windmill overhand right from Garcia. Here's the counter in the combo for Now, I don't, I don't know why they're allowing her to just hold her by the head and punch. I don't know if that's legal or not. I got to... <laughs> Almost a half tie plug, and a lot of swelling under the left eye of Garcia. Reset exhale from Rawlings coming forward, center of the ring, center of the squared circle. Good jab. 
Outstanding referee Bill Clancy letting this fight flow. Two A-plus-plus plus refs on the card, Dan Mogliata and Bill Clancy. This is an A-plus-plus plus fight thus far. Antonio, there's a lot of swelling under the left eye of Alma Garcia. Yeah, she's looking really bad right now. She's getting busted up with those short, crisp shots. And she's still trying to find one of those right hands to get in. But Rollins defense, th th there again. It's the break from Clancy. Rollins is targeting that swelling under Garcia's eye. Rollins has had two times in this fight where she has grabbed her by the back of the head, held her, and I'm talking about landed at least four, five, six devastating shots from an uppercut fashion. Final seconds, round number two. It's been everything fans were looking for and then some through the opening nearly four minutes. Beck Rollins versus Alma Garcia, four minutes complete. Next up, round three. defeat. She certainly had her moments through those four minutes and two rounds. A lot of fight of the night candidates. And that's certainly one of them. Beck gonna have to get some ice pack on, get some ice on that right hand. It's swelling. So through eight fights on this card, we have been to round number three just once. <laughs> and that was a phenomenal fight. Reggie Barnett Jr. defeating Travis Thompson by way of five round unanimous decision. Every other fight has ended inside of two rounds. A lot of action in that fight, a lot of action. Our opening bout of the evening, Arnold Adams defeating DJ Linderman. Heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number one. Linderman could not continue after round two. Same scenario here in our co-main event. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our doctor at ringside steps in and calls a stop to the bout at two minutes into round number two for your winner by TKO, Dr. Stoppage, Rowdy Beck Rawlings. Let's go to Ron. Big smile on this lady's face, Beck Rawlings. You know, you kind of took a chance coming here and being a part of bare knuckle fighting because some said you were just a win or two away from getting back to the UFC, but you wanted to be a part of history. Talk about how special this night is. Um, this sport's made for me. I don't know if you can see, but um, I love to box and I think the bare knuckle aspect is just fits me. So. Of course I'm going to take a chance on it. I think this sport's amazing. This is only the beginning and it's great to be part of the first one. Well, you came out firing against a very tough boxer in Alma Garcia. Take us through this fight and, and, and how you feel that you were successful. Uh, she came out hard. I wasn't expecting that. I thought she would try and stick behind her jab. But um, my team, my coach, we've been working on cover guards and um, 
and really busting their hands up with my guards. So, and that worked to a T. Um, wouldn't be able to do it without my awesome team and my awesome coach behind me. So hats off to them, really. <laughs> Big win for sure. You're in Invicta and UFC veteran. What was it like to fight though here in the squared circle? Uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's an amazing atmosphere. I love the squared circle. Um, and it's great to just be able to let my hands go and really showcase my boxing skills. I feel like I outboxed a boxer today. All right, Wyoming, give it up for your winner, Beck Rawlings. Congratulations, Beck. I'm the queen of box, bare knuckle boxing. Remember it. All right, guys, back to you. Thank you, Ron. Beck Rawlings, deservedly champ, one of the true faces of female fighting worldwide. Yeah, she's gonna be tough to beat and gonna be uh, someone to reckon with in this bare knuckle fighting championship. But we're gonna have to question the rules on that snatch and grab. Look like she perfected that move to a T. Classic MMA from the half tie club. But it's those shots right there with all her body coming with the power. And again, I question that, even though it was very effective. I question it, though. Is that a legal tactic? Garcia did not put on her stool. It was our second position stoppage of the night. You heard Jeff Houston stay officially two minutes round number two. Beck Rawlings victorious over Alma Garcia. And again, quite possibly the fight of the night where we've had yes. a lot of candidates. Still two fights to come. We will conclude. BKFC, the beginning, our first ever, first ever of many to come bare knuckle fighting championship cards with heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number four. Indeed, it is our main event. Former UFC heavyweight champion Rico Rodriguez versus 28 fight pro MMA veteran and Bellator veteran Lewis Rumsey. Right now, we are set for our heavyweight tournament alternate bout, Joey Beltran versus Tony Lopez. Tony Lopez, a remarkable 60 career pro MMA wins, 23 of those by way of TKO or straight knockout. Lopez actually applied and was not ultimately chosen to fight in UFC 4. I'm gonna have to ask Art Davey about this. I know Art Davey is watching at home. He's going to be inducted next month into the UFC Hall of Fame and from Nevada he is watching proudly. Thinking, I probably should have signed this man at UFC 4. Tony Lopez, twice in MMA, he has fought and twice he has defeated Joey Beltron. May 2008, Lopez defeated Beltron by way of first round submission. They rematched October 2009, Lopez won by way of five round unanimous decision. A fight that Beltron feels that he most definitely won. Lopez said at age 44 he has learned to train smart rather than just train hard. He is extremely relaxed entering this his bare knuckle debut. Joey Beltran, like his opponent, this heavyweight tournament alternate bout, Tony Lopez has also had an outstanding and prolific pro MMA career. 33. Career professional mixed martial arts bouts. Beltron fought 10 times in the UFC, eight times in Bellator. The champ, Beltron grew up in California, wanting to be a professional boxer. He idolized, as did I, the great Julio Cesar Chavez. Man, what a guy to idolize. He's a legend. Some of the biggest fights in pay-per-view history. Beltron said, he has learned in his two MMA bouts versus Tony Lopez. He knows that Lopez is incredibly tough, incredibly resilient, and has a great chin. Beltran said, I cannot get emotional. I need to maintain a hard and heavy pace. And I quote, cannot let Tony Lopez breathe in this fight. Keep in mind, animosity flowing in both directions. These two fighters truly dislike each other as we are now set for our tail of the tape. Our heavyweight tournament alternate bout, Joey Beltran versus Tony Lopez. Lopez has a three inch height advantage and uh, Beltran has a uh, about 20 pound weight advantage. So we'll see if that weight can get behind those punches and make a difference tonight. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is a heavyweight tournament alternate fight scheduled for five two-minute rounds. And it is brought to you by the United States Air Force, AIM High. 
Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black trimmed in green. He stands six feet five inches tall. His official weight, 232.6 pounds. His MMA record is an incredible one. At 60 victories, opposite 28 defeats, with 23 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Yucaipa, California, please welcome Tony Kryptonite Lopez. And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears black trimmed in white. He stands six feet two inches tall. His official weight, 254 pounds. His pro MMA record consists of 17 victories opposite 15 defeats with 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is a UFC and Bellator veteran fighting out of Carlsbad, California. Here is Joey the Executioner, Beltran. And our referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. Toe the line, gentlemen. Wait for my command. Knuckle up. Here we go with round number one. Black and white trunks for Joey Beltron, black and green trunks for Tony Lopez. Wide open, squared stance from Lopez, staying outside. But Lopez calls the kickboxing range. Beltron to the body with the right hand, working off the jab. Champ Lopez staying very long. Bill Clancy warning both fighters, keep your fingers closed when you extend. Yeah, it looks like both both fighters are uh, opening their hands when they're not in, in close. And we saw uh, earlier where um, a guy was getting thumb with the fingers. So we want to keep those hands closed. Lopez to the body. Beltron smartly right back to the head. Bigger shots to the body now from Beltron turning to the inside. Lopez looking to counter, and there's that half-tie plum yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them did the move. Big XL from Beltron. Exposing the front shoulder. Slight swelling under Beltron's left eye. And Beltron looked like he's breathing hard already. Overhand right. He came out to the body. He came out a little fast. He wanted to come out fast and put a lot of pressure. But he may not have the condition, conditioning to do that. He's going to have to wait and see if he can uh, maintain. 25 seconds remaining round number one. 20 seconds going. Lopez long to the body. Lopez right back to the inside. Smile on the face of Beltron. Oh. Big shot from Beltron. Down goes Tony Lopez. First knockdown in this fight. Remember, he cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Bill Clancy continues his count. Lopez says he is fine. And that's the end of round one. Smart tactical round number one for Joey Beltron. It was pretty even up to that point until that sharp right hand got in and he fell hard. Lopez fell hard. And you heard a lot of people say you can knock someone out with a six inch punch. I think that one was about three inches. He just turned it over, he never saw it. I believe Muhammad Ali called that the anchor punch. <laughs> right there, beautiful. Beautiful timing by Beltron, beautiful timing. Short and sharp. And again, when you got that weight behind you, it doesn't take much because you're punching with your body. Confirmation, we are headed into round number two. A phenomenal atmosphere here in Cheyenne, Wyoming at the Ice and Events Center. This city has been a tremendous host. This state has been a tremendous Remember, keep host. Your, knuckle, your fingers locked, okay? Two fighters up Hold to scratch, to towing the line, knuckling up. Knuckle up. Round number two. Beltron immediately working off of the jab. Lopez staying a bit longer. 
There's a good counter right hand from Joey Beltran. Lopez is going to have to start pulling out every time he gets in. It might be a benefit him to stay inside, but when he's pulling out, he's available for Bell trying to land that shot he don't see. Lopez again wiping the hair out of his eyes. Three seconds already gone round number two. Again, you will note these two minute rounds fly by, although we've had a lot of first round finishes tonight. Beltran pulling this fight back again. He talked about not getting emotional, not getting into a firefight against Tony Lopez. Lopez switched southpaw. Ooh. Flipping right hand from Joey Beltran. Counters again from Joey Beltran, looking sharp. Lopez trying to find a way in. He's either all the way out, champ, or all the way in. Half-tie plum there. The counter hold, both fighters so incredibly experienced in MMA and working in the clinch. Separation from Bill Clancy. You would think Tony Lopez would have the advantage from the outside, but it looks like he's getting beat to the punch every time by Beltran. Again, counter. And it's those shots, uppercuts. Beltran only half jokingly said so many of Lopez's 60 career pro wins in MMA have come from his opponents just getting tired of beating him up and then losing. <laughs> Lopez, proudly a very resilient fighter who has made his name in MMA largely on resiliency and having the ability to overcome adversity. And also really good striking from the outside, but this is an inside striking fight thus far for Joey Beltran, the end of round two. You saw the eye contact there. Again, these fighters really dislike you. Yes, yes. Remember, still to come, it is our main event of the evening. Our 10th and final fight of this historic BKFC card. Rico Rodriguez versus Lewis Rumsey. Heavyweight tournament quarterfinal number four. We are in English tonight with Antonio Tarver, myself, Sean Wheelock, and we are proudly in Spanish. There is Benny Ricardo, outstanding fight commentator in English and Spanish. He's also a great NFL commentator, and he played in the NFL. So happy to have Benny Ricardo with us, commentating the NFL Fighting Championship from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Welcome, Benny. For just the th second time tonight, we will see round number three. Seconds out whistle. Four first round finishes. The doctor's checking Tony Lopez. Trump for a moment celebrated as though he had won this fight, but we will go to round number three of this heavyweight tournament alternate bout. See the fighters towing the line up to scratch. Round number three. Note the tape on Lopez's hands that's just wrist tape. Lopez, throughout his pro MMA career, has never, and I mean never, wrapped his hands. He's just put on the MMA gloves. And that is minimal wrapping there. And the thumb is allowed to be wrapped, the wrist, the hands that prevent boxers' fractures, the taping must be one inch below the knuckles, true bare knuckle fighting. Lopez taking that to the extreme, Antonio. And you said Lopez was resilient. He looks like he has a second win right now. He's been throwing some good shots with power. I think he landed a great body shot earlier. So we'll see. Looks like he's uh, picking up the pace here. Beltran circling out. Still working off of the jab. Smart, measured, steady pace thus far set by Joey Beltran. Lopez loading up the left hand. Again, all the way out or all the way in. Time called by Clancy. Lopez claiming he was poked in the eye. Indeed, that's the ruling from Clancy. Come here. Come here. Clancy now calling in the Wyoming ringside position. Two assigned by the commission tonight. Accidental eye poke. You know, in boxing, they used to get thumbed in the eye all the time until they then started doing thumbless gloves. So to prevent the, the poking in the eye. I don't know we, what's going to happen here. It's hard to keep a closed fist when your hands are, are out and available like that. 
Lopez now has up to five minutes to continue. Sir Bill Clancy asked Lopez if he needs some time. So let's touch gloves. Confirmation from Clancy that it was an accidental eye poke from Joey Beltran. Lopez is ready. Not interested in any of those five minutes. Taking the bare minimum. Just like the wrapping and tape on his hands. Round number three resumes. Yeah, Lopez is having a good first round, uh, th third round here, so no wonder he wants to get back to it. Big shots now from Beltron, really opening up, trying to find the finish line in round three. And they're working the, ooh. Lopez cut. Outside of his left brow, blood all over his face, and Beltron opening up even more, turning up the temperature. Best sequence of the fight for Joey Beltron. Lopez still there, throwing hard shots. Blood and hair obscuring Lopez's vision. Uppercuts in the clinch. There's the dirty boxing from Beltran. Time called by Bill Clancy, this time for the cut. And that's a slice. It's bad. Just heard Clancy say it's bad. It's pretty fucking bad. Not sure what the close captioning operator just did with that move from Bill Clancy. Lopez said, I still see fine. It's the champion in him. It's on top of the head, it looks like. Top of the forehead. There are cuts and then there are slices. That's a slice. Two cornermen going to work. Tony Lopez trying to allow this fight to continue. Jim Smith. Jacob Stitch Duran. Tony Lopez, to the surprise of no one who has followed his fighting career, says he wants to continue. Beltran swinging once more big. Lopez now really opening up on the inside. Whoa. Final seconds, round number three. Look Beltran at Lopez. Oh. Fight on. Best sequence of the fight from a neutral perspective. <laughs> There's the bell. We are headed to round four. The Cheyenne, Wyoming crowd in unison on their feet. Champ, you and I talked about this. I said I think this is the sleeper fight of the 10 on the card. Just living up to what I thought. Yeah, Tony Lopez having a great third round, and then that cut came out of nowhere. I don't think it was led, uh, caused by a punch. I don't think it was caused by a punch on the top of the forehead, but right there, straight left hand by Lopez. And another one. He knew it was desperation time right there, and he let it all out and landed some of his best shots at the end of the third round. You saw the mouthpiece going up from Beltron. That's first class referee by Bill Clancy. There was not a neutral situation, so he never stopped to put the mouthpiece back in. Toe the line, gentlemen. We heard Clancy toe the line, gentlemen. Big exhale from Joey Beltron. Round number four. How great is coming up to scratch? <laughs> Fighting championship, again, bringing back the line, the scratch line from the Broughton rules and the London prize ring rules that govern bare knuckle fighting in the 17 and 1800s. Exhale from Beltron. Great pressure from Lopez, trying to throw to the body. Clever turn from Joey Beltron. Wide open striking guard champ for Lopez. Hands much higher for Joey Beltran, who steps into the pocket. Both exchanging good body shots. Man, talk about Lopez's heart, man. He has it. Great shots from Beltran. Lopez again wiping the hair, trying to wipe the blood out of his eyes, especially his left eye. Blood flowing freely into the left eye from that cut. Slight trickle of blood on the face of Beltron, but it very well might be the blood of Lopez. 45 seconds remaining round number four, and there's the smile from Joey Beltron. Better stuff from Lopez. 
Hands high now from Lopez. Beltran right back with clean straight punches. Opponents on this card. Grace Jackson and Dale Soapy really like each other. Opponents on this card. Sam Shoemaker and Eric Prindle really like each other. Joey Beltran and Tony Lopez really dislike each other. Blood all over the face of Lopez. Closing stages round number four. More big straight punches from Beltran. Now Beltran definitely cut. Back comes Tony Lopez. The battle and we are headed to the fifth and final round. <laughs> Into the corner of Joey Beltron. This is a quality, fun fight, champ. Back we go to round four. Beltron here, have, look at that body shot right there. That hurt. Ooh, right up under the rib cage. And another one. Some of the best work from Lopez in that round. Lopez, no quit in him. Wake me up good. Wake me Head up good. Head into the fifth and final round of this heavyweight tournament right alternate place. bout between rounds four and five. Promoter Dave Feldman, the president and CEO of Bare Knuckle Fighting Come Championship. On. Antonio and Formi, regardless of the outcome, he is awarding a bonus to both fighters. And they deserve it tonight. Without question. Putting on a heck of a show. Lopez opening long. You see Beltron trying to step inside. Lopez has to believe that he's a little bit behind in this fight. Look at that. Big oh. shot from Tony Lopez. <laughs> Beltron firing back on the counter. If you've never watched Tony Lopez in his pro MMA career, it usually looks like this. He's never out of a fight, man, because he has a big heart of a champion. And he has to feel he's behind in this fight. So you're going to look to see. Look for him to, to close the show here if he's going to pull it out. Go back to what Beltron said. I know he's tough. I know he has a great chin. I cannot get emotional in this fight. Beltron Beltron is bleeding very bad fighter. also. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Champion a oh! big cut from Lopez. Lopez stepping in. One minute left. Down the stretch we go. Lopez loses. Again, this Cheyenne, Wyoming sold-out crowd on their feet in unison. <laughs> the break from Bill Clancy. Knuckle up, knuckle up. Right hand on the inside, right hand right back from Lopez. Both fighters in the clinch holding half tight plum and both to the bottom. Oh, bottom. good uppercut. If you do not like this fight, bare knuckle fighting is simply not for you. <laughs> I love this fight. Two of my favorite fighters in MMA, two of my favorite fighters in bare knuckle. Again, the separation from Bill Clancy. 15 seconds remaining in this heavyweight tournament alternate bout. This is tremendous. <laughs> Beltran walking forward with punches to the body. Blood all over the face of Joey Beltran. Blood all over the face of Tony Lopez. They're what a still fight. Throwing, they throw to the belt. What a fight. Woo! And no hug from Beltron and no mood to celebrate that fight with Tony Lopez. That really shows the animosity between <laughs> these two. Beltron refused the hug. That was phenomenal. Wow. Both men refusing to lose, both men refusing to lay down. What a fight. Just the second fight to go beyond two rounds on this 10-fight card, this fight number nine. The second fight to go Good the fight, distance. Good fight. Good fight. Stitch Durant going to work on Joey Beltran. Lopez knew he had to go to work. Look at those shots, he's landing perfectly. Beltran, credit for standing up.
This is Lopez all day. The body work. One. Both guys, solid boxing body shots right there. They're going to feel those in the morning. Oh, <laughs> nice shot. It was a bloodbath, but boy, a lot of action in this fight. We've had four first round finishes tonight. We've had seven finishes in all. But right now, the buzz is all about these two fighters, Joey Beltran and Tony Lopez, going incredibly hard over the full five rounds in 10 minutes. There you see the slice. Two slices, in fact, one just opened blood. Above the nose, two parallel slices. Bridge of the nose on the face of Joey Beltran. Both gave, both received, champ. Man, they're going to be sore in the morning, but I tell you, they put on a heck of a show, and both should be very, very proud of themselves. To be a part of history tonight. Jim Smith. Dick Durant definitely had their work cut out for them in this fight. Two quality cut men going to work. And Beltran and Lopez, two high quality fighters going to work. Sean, I think that knockdown may be the difference in this fight. To end all suspense, here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the decision, let's have a round of applause for these two heavyweight warriors. After completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. Judge number one and judge number two both see the fight 49-45, and our third judge sees the fight 49-46. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Joey the Mexicutioner, Beltran. And the animosity continues. That's awesome, man. Let's do it. Now it's finally ended. That's man. a really a nice moment in the squared circle. Two really likable fighters, two really likable people. Perhaps the animosity will end. Their third fight in combat sports. Again, Lopez, two fights, two wins in MMA versus Joey Beltran. But in the bare knuckle debut for both, Beltran defeating Lopez by way of unanimous decision in an absolutely ferocious fight. It's a different game in the bare knuckle. Bare knuckle fighting championship. I that is our heavyweight tournament alternate bout. If an alternate is needed in the final four, that alternate will be Joey Beltron. One place remains in the semifinals. You will see it later this year in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. That place will either go to Rico Rodriguez or Lewis Rumsey. They are set for our main event of the evening. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the squared circle, Lewis Rumsey. Lewis Rumsey, a veteran of 28 professional MMA bouts, including one in Bellator. He said, I'm honored, but not intimidated to face Rico Rodriguez. They call Rodriguez a legend. Very accurate assessment, very clear of I Rumsey of Rico Rodriguez. He said he's a brawler, I can't brawl. He said I need to keep my hands up. He said I never fight angry, I can't fight on emotion, I need to pick my shots because I think Rodriguez is going to come in hard and then perhaps burn himself out. Very smart for him to feel that way. Has to be under control, has to stay poised. Enrico has all the pressure on him. He said, everybody's here to see him. Everybody's paying pay-per-view to see him. 
so it's a lot of pressure on Rico. Maybe he can flip the tables tonight, but we haven't had a real upset yet. All the favorites have won. Former UFC heavyweight champion Rigo Rodriguez is fully focused on making his bare knuckle debut and overwhelming success. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I've been fighting all around the world. I have never went from old to new. It's still me. I've just been pushed out of pay-per-view. Now I'm back. Now you're giving me an opportunity to shine and you're gonna see some knockouts. I promise you it's gonna be entertaining. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring, Rico Rodriguez! September 2002, Rico Rodriguez defeated Randy Couture to win the then vacant UFC Heavyweight Championship. Throughout his pro MMA career, Rodriguez has accumulated 54 victories. He fought a total of seven times in the UFC, four times in Pride, twice in WEC, and once in Bellator. He's also fought twice as a professional boxer. Rodriguez holds the rank of black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under the great Jean-Jacques Machado. Champ, he feels that very well may help him in the clinch in an infighting versus Lewis Rumsey. Yeah, the infighting is very important as we saw in our last fight. A lot of good, devastating body shots that can be landed in close. And it seems like the referee is letting them work. So don't look for a quick break in the action when you get inside. Rodriguez said, I feel great, but I also realize all of the pressure is on me. 100%, I am expected to win this fight versus Lewis Rumsey. And I think he puts a lot of that pressure on himself because it, it really forces him to perform. And uh, I, I think I'm, in, I'm like that in a lot of ways. A lot of those fighters, great champions, put that pressure on themselves because they know you, you have to perform under pressure. And if there's no pressure, well, how are you going to bring the best out of yourself? From the National Police Gazette to now the Wyoming Mixed Martial Arts and Combative Sports Commission, we are set for our main event of the evening. Heavyweight Tournament quarterfinal number four, Rico Rodriguez versus Lewis Rumsey. Champ, we see the numbers. The numbers are right there. 6'3", uh, uh, he has a big height of, uh, difference, but I think experience is the key tonight. Back we go to the outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to our main event of the evening, I am pleased to announce that Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is the number three trending topic in the world on live social media. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the frontier city, Cheyenne, Wyoming, live world! Why? We are now set for the main event of the evening, and it is a heavyweight tournament quarterfinal fight scheduled for five two-minute rounds. This fight is sanctioned by the Wyoming MMA Commission, President Brian Pedersen, Vice President Dennis Ellis, Treasurer Brad Kinchelo. Our three judges scoring this bout, Josh Johnson, Janelle Mellish, Tom Gilogui, and ladies and gentlemen, the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Big Dan Mergliata. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Cheyenne Ice and Event Center, we said it once and we're gonna say it again. It's time to knock off! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears red, trimmed with black. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 243.8 pounds. He is an MMA veteran of 28 professional fights. He fights out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Please welcome Lewis the Beast Rumsey. And across the squared circle, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. 
He stands six feet three inches tall. His official weight, 246.2 pounds. His incredible MMA record consists of 54 victories, opposite 25 defeats, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He is a former Pride veteran. He is a former Eastern European champion. He is a former King of the Cage heavyweight champion. And he is the former UFC heavyweight champion of the world. Fighting out of Staten Island, New York, by way of Jersey City, New Jersey, Rico Suave Rodriguez! And once again, ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliotta. Gentlemen, total line. Yes, sir. Are you ready? Let's go, knuckle up. The bell in round number one. Black trunks for Rico Rodriguez, red trunks for Lewis Rumsey. Hands wide open and high for Rumsey. Takes a big swing, steps back to the outside. Long stiff jab from Rodriguez, lands flush. Big swing and a miss by Rodriguez on the overhand right. I think Rumsey is doing good by doing a lot of movement right now. He don't want to sit right there in range for Rodriguez to land some of those big shots. There you see the dirty boxing. Uh, oh, break. that's a nice great clean. turn strikes, from Rumsey. Good job, Hands and the up. separation Ready. from Dan Mergliata. Definitely gave Rumsey some confidence though, champ. Another big swing and a miss by Rodriguez. That on the lead left hook. It's exactly what Rumsey thought. Rodriguez would come out swinging big for the early knockout. So hey, pleased Ron. to be with the great Antonio Tarver. Welcome all of you watching World Night, Worldwide BKFC, the beginning. Our main event, Rodriguez stepping in. Rams is doing good with the movement. He looked like he tried to sneak a little Except counter left hook in there. Hands up, ready? Lock him up. Moving well for a big guy. It's very high in discipline for Rodriguez. 40 seconds remaining round number one. Rumsey to the body to no avail. Very methodical pace thus far. Rodriguez looking for the level change, couldn't find it. If someone can land something big here, Mike can steal this round. Swinging big, missing on the inside, swinging big again. Now final seconds, round number one. That's a clever turn from Rodriguez. Separation again from Mergliata. There's the bell. We're headed to round two. Champ, you and I talked earlier today about a point in a fight for someone who's perceived as the underdog, Lewis Rumsey, certainly in this case, where they think, you know what? I just might be able to win this thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's important that Rocco doesn't let him get the confidence because that's all it takes for a guy like Rumsey to see that he's in this fight and he has a chance to win. They build up confidence, man. It's hard to take that confidence away once a guy get going. Very better. Look at that, how, how he spent them. But I think the, the best thing he did there was avoid that big right hand that Ramsey was trying to land. The winner of this, our main event, becomes the fourth and final semifinalist right, in the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship up. Heavyweight Total Tournament, which will come to a conclusion at the end of this year. You will see the semifinals later this year, and then by the end of the year, the final fight. It's the final fight of the card, and a big left hand from Rodriguez. See, that's where Rodriguez wants to do his work at, right inside. He's the bigger guy. He's putting that weight on him. And it gives Ramsey no room to really work. Ben Mergliata keeping this fight flowing. You can hit in the clinch, but you can't just tie up. Another left hand from Rodriguez. Ramsey's gonna have to keep his head up when he's throwing. He's gonna get countered by uh, Rodriguez, I believe. He's throwing good shots, but he's ducking down. He can't even see anything coming back. 50 seconds gone, round number two. 
He talked about picking his shots. He's doing just that, but relatively limited offense thus far. And Rodriguez being elusive. He's not allowing Ramsey to land anything. Rodriguez to the body of Lewis Rumsey. Smear of blood on Rumsey's face. And you know when a fighter sees blood, he goes at it. See the overhooks being held to turn the separation. Almost a Superman punch by Rodriguez. Dirty boxing from both. Heavy pressure on the inside from Rodriguez. Body head. Rumsey just trying to tie up arms. Again, the separation from Dan Bergliotta. 15 seconds remaining in this fight. Rodriguez literally running into the pocket. He's getting aggressive now. He want to stay close inside and do some, some good work close in. Short uppercut by Rumsey, answered by Rodriguez. Now Rodriguez to the body. A lot of clinch work, a lot of inside fighting from both men. There's the bell. A nod from Rodriguez to Rumsey. We're headed to round three. Our tenth and final fight of this historic Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship card. Through the opening nine fights, you've seen seven finishes, four in the first round, and that vicious one-punch knockout for Sam Shoemaker as he booked his place in the final four, defeating Eric Prindle. Right there inside, we're all advantage Rodriguez right here. He's switching, he's grabbing with the right, grabbing with the left, and he's doing good work with that free hand. You'll see a nice uppercut coming here. He's getting aggressive right now. He felt like he had to do something to clearly win this round. I think I gave it to him. Line, guys, total line, ready? Her telling both fighters to the line, up to scratch. Round number three. Rodriguez champing very disciplined with his striking defense, a high, tight guard. Gotta serve him well. To the body. To doing the lockdown, Lewis Rumsey. Rumsey missing with that one, too. He's just not getting close enough. Rumsey is just short with all of his shots. We call it missing by a mile. Up from Rodriguez. Bum rush. And Archie Moore cross arm <laughs> defense now driving in. That was interesting from Rodriguez. I think Rodriguez feels he has the best work inside. He can break his man down and land some good clean shots. 15 remaining round number three. See Rodriguez trying to pull Rumsey back to the center of the squared circle. And swinging big, but Rumsey missing with the one two. Hands wide open, palms wide open now, champ, for Rico Rodriguez. Yeah, that's when we get, we get fingers in, in the eyes and everything. I want to be mindful of that. There are parrying punches, and then there are catching punches. Rodriguez putting his hands out almost to catch the punches of Rumsey. Rodriguez again, heavy pressure to the inside. Mogliato with a quick separation and restart. Continuing the flick to jab, using it as a range finder. Nothing on that step in right from Rumsey. Nothing on the left, counter left hand from Rico Rodriguez. Ooh, that Big left, left hand again. Out came the mouthpiece. Time called by Dan Mergliata. Detecting that the mouthpiece is out. No histrionics from Rumsey. No need to wash it off with water. Mouthpiece back in. Final seconds, round number three. As the great John McCarthy says, water never disinfected anything. <laughs> We're headed to round four. In MMA, the mouthpiece comes out. Man, you jam that thing back in in boxing. It's like a ceremony. <laughs> right. Almost an open-handed slap there from Rico Rodriguez. He 
probably would have did more damage if you had a closed fist. Maximum of two rounds, four minutes remains, and this is our main event of the evening. Said it all night long, and it bears repeating. You are with us live around the world, watching the first fully recognized bare knuckle fighting event in the United States since 1889, and the first legal sanctioned and regulated bare knuckle fighting event ever. Nice right hand landed by Ramsey. From the mainstream to the underground, back to the mainstream tonight here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Back to the inside goes Lewis Rumsey. Their fisted MMA in that last sequence. 30 seconds gone, round number four. Ramsey definitely keeping his cool, staying patient, but at some point you have to turn up the volume. Yeah, he has to get closer to do something right now. Uh, I think he just has to move with his feet and get in ex ex exchange with Rodriguez. Good right hand from Rico Rodriguez, who's on the entry right hand. In the break from Orgliata, and champ, you saw the head positioning so clever of Rodriguez. Not a butt, it's legal, but moving the head, positioning the head to distract your opponent. Ooh. Good left hand! That definitely stopped Rumsey Rodriguez now stepping in. But I think Rodriguez needs to give himself a little room now. He's landing some good shots. He just can't capitalize on it once he hurts him. Right there, stay at that distance and fight. Rumsey froze when he ate that shot, but to his credit, he fights on. You see the overhooks, the slowdown from Lewis Rumsey. Smear of blood on the stomach of Rumsey. Those remain high and tight for Rodriguez, throws the right hand on the entry, and then the jab. He's loading up that overhand right off the jab, just not finding a home for it. This yeah, fight. he's been missing wide all night long. Rodriguez just telling Rumsey, let's go. Oh. Overhand right just misses from Rodriguez. And we are headed to the fifth and final round. Big exhale from Rodriguez as he goes back to his corner. Lewis Rumsey again said, I've got to stay calm. I can't fight angry. But at some point, you've got to find offense. It's not just about effective defense. That was a good left hand, but it landed on top of the head rather than on the chin. I think it would have landed on the chin. It could have been, oh, good uppercut. Rodriguez got some good work in there. I know he want to close the show so we can expect a good, exciting last round here. Our final round of this historic card BKFC, the beginning, our first of many events to right, come. To this line. is not a one-night, one-off pay-per-view. This Ready is the start up. of a new franchise in combat sports, and indeed a new era in combat sports, and the rebirth from the underground to the mainstream of bare-knuckle fighting. Rico Rodriguez versus Luis Rumsey. Rigliata continues to move this fight along. Left hook, swing and a miss from Rodriguez. Trying to change the tempo. Is he throwing long? Rodriguez just stepping to the outside. Less experience, knowing distance. Rodriguez closing distance effectively. <laughs> Guillotine position, and that'll get a separation from Mergliata. I know Rodriguez want to put his imprint on his show tonight. He's going to have to do something big here in the remaining. Rumsey lands a left off of the right. That momentarily took Rodriguez off of his striking line. Reset, center of the ring, center of the squared circle. 60 seconds to go in this main event. Rodriguez again stepping in. Got to give himself room if he's going to land the punch he's looking for. Short right hands from Rumsey. Difficult to generate power from that position. 
see how much both fighters, if any, try to open up now, closing stages of this fight. Or perhaps an accidental clash of heads, no complaint from either. I think they're gonna just ride this one out, man. <laughs> I think condition might be the lack thereof, I mean, of conditioning might have done them in tonight. Again, you see off of the one, the overhand right from Rumsey, not landing Rodriguez, just slipping back. Final seconds now. Definitely a clash of heads. Both fighters continue. That's the end of this fight. Good show of respect there. Immediate disappointment on the face of Lewis Rumsey. Well, I guess, uh, I believe Rico is just too big for him tonight. Uh, too much height and too much experience. He really couldn't get in close and get no work done. I think Rodriguez wanted to do better than he did, but I think he sneaked out the win tonight. be 16 years in September when 40-year-old Rico Rodriguez defeated Randy Couture to win the UFC heavyweight title. Rodriguez now determined to become the bare knuckle fighting championship heavyweight winner. Seems as though he has done enough to advance from quarterfinal number four into the final four. We shall soon see. Camaraderie between the 20 fighters on this card has been outstanding. Perhaps the lone exception, Joey Beltran and Tony Lopez, but after that absolute five round throwdown, quite possibly the fight of the night. Even those two former enemies seem to now be friends. Tremendous brotherhood and sisterhood with these fighters here in Cheyenne, Wyoming for this truly special and historic card, BKFC The Beginning. So pleased that you've been with us tonight watching worldwide in the US, Canada, Australia, Heat internationally. So proud to call these fights with the champ, Antonio Tarver. Thank you, Sean, same here, man. We made history tonight. Glad to be a part of it. We await the tallying of the three judges' scorecards signed by the Wyoming Commission. You see Bobby Gunn in the corner of Rico Rodriguez. La ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, our judges have sent in our scorecards. Judge number one and two both see the fight 50-45. And our third and final judge sees the fight 48-47 for your winner by unanimous decision, Rico Suave Rodriguez. All right, another victory for the veteran, Rico Rodriguez. Listen, you've got wins in pretty much every MMA promotion out there on the biggest stages. But Rico, where does this win rank with some of those other ones? To be honest with you, I, he, I want to give it off to Rams because he took the fight last second. A lot of people don't understand when you switch fighters, you're training for one fighter, it didn't work out. And I'm just blessed that, you know, I was able to do this. It, it looks easy. Everybody's a, a barroom brawler, but in the end of the day, this guy was technical. He was throwing some big shots. I mean, I'm still pretty numb. I'm going to touch my face, but True. My, my knuckles do hurt. And I, it definitely means I got to go back to the drawing board. I saw some of the fights tonight. Everyone looked amazing. It was a great show. Bare knuckles here to stay. You know, it, it can only go up from here. At the end of the day, you keep telling us no, and we're going to keep telling you yes. You don't want us here, but we're going to keep coming back. Wyoming, thank you for sanctioning it. The commissioner, everybody, the fans. Fans, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. It was an honor to see Bobby and everybody else fight. I was like a little kid. I was really nervous. I, it felt like my first fight ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you came in here with 54 career MMA victories, and a couple times I could see it looked like you almost wanted to take him down. How difficult of an adjustment was it not to throw a knee or go for a takedown? I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know, when you get your head rocked, you, you kind of go back to what you know best, and that's, that's knee punching. You know, I, I trained the best I could with this. I, I listened to Bobby. Chris lights out, light out was 
was texting me, he said, you know, everything you're doing, don't do that, train like this. So, you know, I had a lot of support. Everyone keeps asking me, why do I fight? Should I retire and everybody else? Listen, if George Foreman can win a heavyweight title, I'm sorry, heavyweight title at, a, at his age, you know, I can do anything. Bernard Hopkins, I'm not gonna quit until they tell me I can't do this no more. I'm so blessed to be here. Once again, David Feldman, thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope the pay-per-views sell out great. I hope it's gonna be tomorrow the best thing in the world. Rico, Adams, Jackson, Shoemaker all punched their ticket into the semifinals. Is there someone that you would like to match up with, or is it just bring them on? I, did you guys see the heavyweights fight tonight? Like, the lightweights were quick and fast, and they were amazing, and they, they got to go longer, but the heavyweights, when they hit with that power, it, it's, it, you, you, I don't care what anybody says, it hurts, okay? And I, and I was just trying not to get hit. Not because I always like to stay pretty, but I was trying not to take any blows whatsoever. <laughs> All right, Rico, uh, congratulations. Well, nice to see you again, Ron. It's, it's been a long time. It's it, been it a long has. time. They kept me off of pay-per-view for a long time. I'm back. He's back for sure. Rico, enjoy this victory, my Thank man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wyoming. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I love the Everything's been awesome. The people, the service, everyone. Thank you. God bless. All right, there goes Rico Rodriguez. And let's talk with the man who made it possible, David Feldman. Wow. Uh, you sell out the arena, you're trending. Could this event have gone any better tonight? Hey, Ron, I really don't think I could have scripted it any better. I don't think I could have sat down and wrote it out and said, I want this event to go any better. I just want to, you know, like I said before the fight, it's going to be what the fans say. Do the fans like bare knuckle? Yeah. We're here to stay. We are here to stay, and I think that we just showed the rest of the combat sports world that they're... they're there is a new player in town. Wyoming and their commission up here have to get props for taking a chance with this event. As they came through, and this was as exciting as any MMA or boxing event that I've worked, do you feel other athletic commissions will follow the lead of the one here in Wyoming? I mean, I think they have to. First of all, on that note, I want to absolutely give my heartfelt thanks to Brian Pedersen for believing in us to the state of Wyoming, to the Wyoming Combative Arts, Combative Sports Committee, to everybody in Wyoming that welcomed us with open arms. Thank you so much. On the next note, yes, I do think that our phone's gonna ring on Monday. I think we're gonna have some good phone calls and I do think that we're, we're gonna make traction, we're gonna hit it, and we're gonna hit more and more and more and more states. I think that probably by the end of the year, we're probably gonna be in 10, 12 states. And before you know it, if you're a state that doesn't want us, then it's over. And I think the fighters are gonna to start to come to you as well. Before I let you go, just final thoughts and what's coming up next for this organization. We're coming back, we may be back in August, we're definitely back in September, and then we're back in December. And then you know what, I think we're just gonna come back once a month in a different state, and then maybe a different country, and then we're gonna just attempt to take over the world. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is here to stay and that's a statement exclamation point well done david congratulations to you and your family this was a long time coming thank you so much ron and thank you for the fans thank you for the fighters and everybody involved all right great job at this point i will throw it back over to my broadcasting partners sean wheelock and the champ antonio tarver thank you ron thank you david truly a stack card antonio truly an historic night here in cheyenne wyoming we saw 10 fights, seven finishes, four in the first round, and a one-punch knockout win by Sam Shoemaker. Man, if I can sum the night up, it was entertainment at its finest. And I saw a lot of good one-punch knockouts tonight and some determination unheard of. And I'm just glad to be a part of history with you, Sean. And I will be back. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is here to stay. And what we saw, champ, truly, top-level combative sports athletes from MMA, from boxing, from kickboxing, skill was truly on display in the squared circle. Most definitely, man. And uh, from even the, late, the, the women, they performed past belief. So I'm excited about what I witnessed tonight and can't wait to see it again. Champ, truly my honor to be with you tonight. We will do it again soon. We will. Again, a reminder, this is not a one-night, one-off. This is truly the start of a franchise. Again, from the mainstream to the underground and back to the mainstream in full force, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Ron, back to you.
All right, guys, thank you. Incredible job, Sean and Antonio. And as we said at the beginning of the night, we did not know what to expect with the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Would it be like we were back in the 1800s where John L. Sullivan was dominating? Or would it have been maybe a scene out of the Charles Bronson movie, Hard Times? We just didn't know. But what we figured out tonight was this was as an exciting of an event as any boxing or MMA show out there that the people came out and sold out this arena in Wyoming, and we will be back September 29th for the semifinals of the heavyweight tournament. Exciting times for the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Again, for my broadcasting partner, Sean Wheelock, and Antonio Tarver, and the entire crew, I'm Ron Kruk. Thank you, and good night from Wyoming.